And, and you've been to Giza? No, I've never been to Giza. Oh dear. this in just a few days. guys hello everyone <laughs> how are we all doing yeah you guys uh we're still working out a couple of little technical difficulties they can't hear you guys uh kyle and russ just yet on my stream but i just want to say hello to everyone in the chat uh sherry and i saw uh saw matt from ancient architects in there hello everyone we're just um doing a last couple of little, little last minute technical adjustments um to get this uh this thing working it's the first time we're trying doing this sort of a podcast thing live so Stand with us for a thing, uh, for a second. And uh, it's great to see everybody here. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a good chat. We're going to uh, get into a bunch of stuff that came up on the last Egypt trip, some of our learning, some of the things we unlearned. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, yeah. Do you want me? Are you, guys, are you guys live yet? I'll bring you into. We're, yeah, we're streaming. Let me streaming. Start to go live. Yeah. All everybody right. Everybody can, they can basically see everything we're doing. So that's fun. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me bring you guys up here. Live. All right. Here we are. All right. Now yeah, we're live. All right, we are live. Welcome, everyone. There we go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we're, st we're trying to stream this live both on my channel and on the Snakes channel. So. That's right. Uh, yeah, this is, a, well, this is a learning process here. Indeed. We've never done this before, so it's fun. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I think we got a bunch of stuff to talk about. we got a whole bunch of photographs to look at. Uh, we do. we got plenty of topics. Probably not going to be able to get to uh, anywhere, near, anywhere near all of them that we want to. Uh, but you guys are going to get some, those of you, those of you watching the stream on our channel, will get some inside, uh, baseball here on what Kyle's doing. Cause I think you can see everything that's happening on the, the desktop right now. So you can watch him setting this up in logic. Yep. Uh, there it goes. And on, uh, on my, on, on my stream, they just get to see your pretty faces. So <laughs> <laughs> in our dark studio, like we don't have enough lights in here. Yeah. We need your, you got one of those 
I got too many lights in here. Yeah, it's 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 almost yeah. gets too bright in here. But um, no, it's uh, yeah, it's it was it's it's great to we we've been meaning to catch up. I know you guys, anyone was paying attention. I think uh, during the trip, we both did a bunch of live streams uh, from Egypt. Uh, That's right. We we got back what like three weeks ago now, something like that, and um, sort of had a, had a little bit of time to decompress and, and process all of the uh, the all, what we learned there, as well as take a look at all the images. We thought it'd be a good chance to get together and and uh and talk and and um and go through some of the things we learned or unlearned and some of the highlights from the trip because i know for sure I, I learned a bunch of stuff i definitely uh yeah yeah moved some things forward for me so yeah absolutely i i i, I definitely want to talk about the you know the anomalous stonework or what looks like anomalous stonework and then the possible evidence for uh and we've we've discussed this on the audio podcast multiple times already about what looks like uh, evidence for you know stages of construction that may have happened uh, very far apart from each other in time, right? So you see one right. structure that's heavily eroded, and then somebody came in later and did something to it uh, after the erosion took place. Right. Um, yeah. So we got lots of pictures of that, and then there's strange tool marks that you know we also discussed this on the audio show, uh, but it would be good to show people photo th photos of this, like in the quarry at the Osirian. And uh, also, um, uh, let's see where else at the Osirian. Oh, and and the Menkara. Menkara pyramid. Yeah, the third pyramid yeah. up on there in Giza with all of the granite casing stones. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's the one that looks just like a lot of the work from South America. It's these these puffy polygonal granite stones. It's like yeah, bang on for a lot of the stuff you see in South America. Yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely. And yeah. then we have pictures of stone jars. Yeah. Uh, I picked I picked out specific ones that are that are a little strange, you know, that, that where you're like, what was this for? Uh, right. You know, cause they're, they're not all <laughs> jars. They're, uh, I don't know. It's just some really strange shapes. Plates. Uh, yeah. There's some folded, weird fluted things yeah. as well. So if it, some people may not know, but then this, this wasn't on the itinerary, uh, for anyone that, um, was kind of following the tour closely. It was uh, a lot of fun for me. Yusuf and I had sort of planned to spring a surprise on everyone on this trip. And, um, uh, so when we talk a lot about the stone vases, the ones that they have in the museums, they're actually they're spread all out all over the world in, in museums all over the place. But And there was more than 40,000 of them found beneath the Step Pyramid at Saqqara, which is supposedly the first pyramid. And there's a, a tremendous amount of stuff down there. Uh, so on this trip, we, we I kind of, we Yusuf and I kind of planned this in advance, and, but we announced it the day before we did it to the tour participants and you guys as well. Uh, we had the chance to go down beneath the step pyramid, which has only recently been renovated, uh, and that's just, that's quite an adventure. And, and what's what's interesting about that, we'll we'll get into the details of what's down there. But uh, you know, it's it's there's like six or seven kilometers of tunnels and catacombs, and all of the fragments uh, from these stone vases yeah. are still down there. You, you can go down there and find like large pieces of these incredible hard stone, you know, vases made out of schist or uh you know uh, diorite and, and all sorts of exotic stone types and a lot of these yeah. stones and we'll show you some pictures of them they, they still have the tool marks on them you know they have like lathe centering marks it was and it's the first chance i had uh to really handle that stuff because you know in the museums that they're all locked up behind glass cases and they're not going to let like some youtube punter like me handle that stuff so uh, <laughs> it was right. it was incredible to get down there and actually put your hands on some of this impossibly ancient stonework yeah, that yeah. was that was awesome. Yep. Oh, thanks so much for doing that. Because yeah. yeah, that was that was one of the biggest highlights of my trip. I mean, oh, seriously, for sure. To go down there and 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 actually handle them, pick them up, look at them. You know, just man, some of them were so thin too. It was just like, oh my god, how did they? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Just stretches the brain. Yep. It does. Well, and there's a whole story associated with 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 kind of how they were found and, and how they kind of get attributed to the third dynasty and the fourth dynasty. Um, and then, you know, some of the replica work that happened in that period, there's a, um, it, it, it's a story that, that continues or it really starts in at the museum that's located at Saqqara, uh, which is the, the mainstream. They, they have a scene on a wall that they've taken um, and they've put it in this museum in Saqqara. And that's kind of the mainstream explanation for how they made these stone vases uh, it's it's kind of an interesting story. It sets up, it, it's how the mainstream kind of explains it. While well, the third and fourth dynasty Egyptians made all of these vases uh, based on this scene on the wall, but but if you look closely at the vases at the scene on the wall and the different examples we have in there, 
it actually tells a different story, uh, one that I think is a little more interesting, and it certainly makes a lot more sense based on the evidence that we have in the vases, in the uh, in the alabaster pieces that were likely made during that period. But uh, something I think not a lot of people realize is that a lot of those stone vases, they weren't just found in the third and fourth dynasty. I mean, they were found stretching back to the first dynasty, and, and even uh, I've seen some examples of you know, prehistoric or certainly pre-dynastic burial sites that were uncovered in the 60s uh, where they, they found like burial sites for people and they had they found stone vases in them and in those burial sites they carbon dated those remains back to around twelve to 14,000 years ago. So, uh, and you still find these types of stone vases stretching back that far into time. It's, it's, wow. it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That, it, it is crazy. We're, we, I think we have a... Um, we have an audio problem on our end, so if you people do? are watching, you probably can't hear me. So, but go watch oh, really? the binge channel. Yeah, oh. that loopback software we got. Yeah, is just it just told us that we have to purchase it, so it oh, stopped working it's... in the middle of the stream. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Can you bring up the level at a few dB? You guys, a couple dBs lower. Well, Thanks. Just, I'm watching what people are. I'm watching what people are saying on the chats, and they're like, "Yep, all I hear is static." Oh, so, they're not hearing yeah. me either. Yeah, they're not hearing anything, but it's just like, so. Uh, dear me. Going on. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, go to Uncharted X. Check this out. Yeah. yeah, it's on my channel. So we're streaming live on my channel as well. You guys are welcome over here, obviously. Um, yeah. So I just, I just turned. I can, I see you guys in the chat. I, I just, uh, I just boosted the, uh, the snakes volume up a little bit now, uh, as well. So we, oh, yeah, didn't hear us. Yeah, St stand by with us, guys. It's um. Uh, like I said, first time we're trying this out, doing this live. Normally we take our time and record these, you know, not live, but we thought we'd try and share the experience with everybody here. It's, yeah, uh, we've uh, never tried to live stream from yeah, here before. ever before. <laughs> so, we're, and so we're just doing it live. Okay. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Haley's saying wrong, you hear fine. So you guys are on the, the Snakes channel and you guys can hear it. Uh, yeah, like, I just I just reset it to the default. It's going to be you're on the right yeah. and we're on the left okay. or something like that. So yeah. Okay. At least, sure it's, at least it's not static, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. All but right. cool, man. Yeah, the 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 stone jars. I, I actually have um, a picture here yeah. of a very interesting... Let's get into it. I want to see... Let's see if this is going to work. This one. It's kind of hard to see these because you're looking through the glass case. Oh, wow. Um, but holy crap yeah, yeah so obviously you can tell that they, they did a lot of reconstruction on this but this cannot be turned on a lathe unless no unless it went around this way somehow yeah and they i but even then i don't know i guess you could lay that out from the middle mm. and then you could do the sides and then you could cut it in half along its profile right like if this was up against the lathe Maybe. You see what I'm saying? Well, you'd have to. Yeah. It's just, I don't know how you make this other than <laughs> and then like grinding it with some other type of tool, like a CNC, like a machine tool. Well, I, I think there was a lot of that going on. The, the other object that's like this that, you know, the schist disc obviously is the, is the famous one that is the same sort of problem. You can't really shape those things with a lathe. Yeah. And objects like that. There you go. That's the schist disc. That's also been put back together. And, you know, I talked about. You know, um, this was actually this isn't a third or fourth dynasty. This was found in the tomb of a prince from the first dynasty, and it's one of the most, you know, complex stone objects they've ever found. Obviously, they found pieces of it and they've reconstructed it. Um, they keep moving it around in the museum. It's kind of funny. Every time you go to the museum, yeah. you got to go on a little treasure hunt to find the damn thing. Um, <laughs> they keep moving it. Um, but you know, that's the, the the fact is with the jars too. Like not all the jars. Like, I think the lathe work was involved in a lot of the vases and jars. But there's parts of them that obviously aren't done on a lathe because a lot of those jars have handles and, and those handles stick out on the sides. And that's, that's right. obviously not, not something you can turn on a lathe. So I think there were other tools involved in the process as well. Uh, you know, yeah. A lot of the handles so, have drill holes in them that go through it as well. I've got, I've got a bunch now, of Yusuf pictures. Yusuf actually, those. Yusuf pointed out that in, in the case of the handles, you would have to lathe the profile of the handle all the way around the vase. Yep, and then clean it off. You know. And then you'd have to cut off the part that you don't want and just leave the handle sticking out right? and then drill through them. Right. It's, yep. um, so yeah, I mean, the other thing is this, it's like, yeah, <laughs> you really try to figure out how to turn this on a lathe. You can't, you can't take these parts out 
on a lathe. You would this would have to be done after, or yep. or the piece, the whole piece of stone would have had to have been cut with these grooves first. Yeah, and the fact that it's it's um, they're not straight across from each other. A bus. In other words, it's like a it's a pentagonal. Uh huh. Makes it even right. more difficult. Well, True, yeah, five sides on that thing. That's a weird piece. No. Yeah, there's a bunch of them like that that just defy your imagination. Um, yeah. And it's clearly got a centering. Like that's like that that the the, the mark in the center there is, it seems to be pretty, you know, yeah. perfectly circular. And um, yep. you know, there was a piece. Even one of the things that struck me was there was a piece. I've I've got a photo of it on on mine uh, down at the bottom of the step room. Let me see if I can share mine here. Where are we? Now they're saying they can't hear Ben. Sorry, I know I'm interrupting. With that's that's all right. Man. Yeah, they can hear us, but they can't hear Ben. Hey, he doesn't have anything important to say anyway. <laughs> no, no, no. Let, <laughs> let Epic fail. I'm going live, live. Yeah, we just need to license that loopback software, and it'll work. Yeah. No, yeah, these should I do happen. it live? These things put happen. the credit card info in there. And <laughs> no, <do> it <laughs> sharing my sharing the desktop. desktop. <laughs> nope, can't do it right now. <laughs> uh, where are we, bots? live podcast i'm looking for through. this here uh, and then i'll share this in a second on uh, my stream can see what i'm doing too because i'm sharing my um, yeah you guys just thing. go go to ben's ben stream we, we might just end our live version because it's not working oh really. uh, that sucks let me turn it off let me yeah uh, we'll just we'll just uh, stop it share screen here uh, yeah i'll share this for you guys in broadcast okay so yeah what i was um so we can get it. Let's get into this. Uh, let me move this. Get into this. The, the vases thing. Uh, what was I going to say? So this was the piece that one of the pieces that we found down beneath the um, the step pyramid. Can, can I make us any bigger here? I don't think so. Uh, show grid video. Whatever. It's fine. I mean, we're little tiny videos in the corner here. It's all right. So this was one of the pieces that we found down in the beneath the step pyramid. I'm not sure what stone this is. You guys can see this. Yeah. 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 Uh, you can't remember this piece. It's translucent, so when we, we I mean, it looks like quartz almost. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> like sort of, smoky quartz, right? And it was translucent. I remember we were shining a torch beneath it, and you could see the light come through the stone. Um, but what I found interesting, just handling this thing, is obviously you have this this laid out center mark in it, but there's you can kind of see it in the center. There's a depression. There was absolutely oh, a, yeah. a centering mark and a centering depression on here, which is really only used if, if you if you've got that tool you know that piece set up on a lathe and, you, and you're spinning it that way um but yeah down beneath the, the step pyramid there was just tons of this sort of stuff down there uh maybe maybe we can maybe we can go through uh kind of that journey down beneath the step pyramid um some of you may have seen from some of my other my other videos but when you get down beneath the step pyramid there's five or six levels of of you know tunnels and structures and as i said like at least six kilometers of tunnels and catacombs down there. They, they're still digging and they're still clearing them out. Uh, but one thing you do find when you get down there at the bottom of this, when you, right beneath the step pyramid is this giant shaft, you know, big open shaft. It's like 90, 100 feet deep. And as you can see, 30 or 40 foot wide. And in it, right at the bottom here is this just gigantic multi-piece uh, granite box. Uh, it's made up of 32 uh, pieces of granite. Most of these pieces weigh between probably two and five or six tons. And and it's sort of sitting at the bottom of this shaft, right beneath uh, where the step pyramid is. So last year, when I was in Egypt, twenty twenty, you can you can get into what's called the the Persian tunnel, and it it's a tunnel dug by the Persians to get into just beneath the pyramid. And you pop out, and and you're looking down at the top of the shaft. You're looking down on top of this box. So uh, I'd always wanted to get down here. So this is the the special permission that let us get down in here and actually take a closer look at this thing. But uh, yeah, 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 that was amazing to go down in there. Uh, I didn't, I, I actually wanted to try going in through the top and looking down at it first, but we just went, we just went straight, straight down, down because I do, I've seen your video where you walk up and then look down and, uh, it's pretty impressive to see it from way up there. Um, it is. Yeah. It's a good picture so, of you, Ross. Though, too. Oh yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. Roger. Thank yeah, you for I that have, super chat, man. I have, uh. I have lots of photos of the tunnels down here. Did you guys, what did you guys think of the crystals growing out of the walls? Like I was trying to get more information from the archaeologist on how long that takes for those things to grow. And it yeah. really, I've, didn't really, I've definitely, yeah, they didn't really talk about it. Yeah, I've definitely got it on the video. Maybe we could, I could pop up, pop it up on the video here. At least so the people will see it. Although you won't, it'll be a little, little jumpy around for you. But so that's one of the things that happens when you get down into these tunnels. And this is what some of the tunnels kind of look like down beneath the the step pyramid. 
maybe we can see some of it on the walls here. But the the salt crystals is one thing uh, that you see this um, uh, down here, and you also see it in some other spots where you get down deep underground. But you have these halite salt crystals growing out of the walls, and some of them get to be, you know, really big, like um, you know, twelve inches or more of these big curling sort of horns of these salt crystals that grow out of the walls. Uh, it's a substance called halite. Yeah. Let yeah. me stop sharing. You gotta, you're sharing it? Okay. Yeah, well, let me, let me, I've got a... I'm sharing just the pictures of the... Beneath the step. Do you have a picture of the salt crystals? I do. Let yeah. me stop sharing then. Okay. Yeah, let me show some... Real interesting. And uh, they've knocked a lot of them off now. Like they're... Um... Yeah. These are my pictures of the box and the shaft above it. So, oh, there you go. Yeah, so there's yeah. that little balcony up there. Where is it? On the... I think we're, I think it's I directly think above us in, in this. Yeah, it's in yeah, our corner. Yeah. That's the balcony that you look down. And at. I think that's that's the that's the pyramid masonry all the way up at the top. It there, is right? with the wood. Yeah, yeah. that's right. right. That's that the Lebanese cedar wood. It's actually one of the yeah. first um, bits of organic material to ever be carbon dated. Was uh, was some mm. of the wood from this pyramid. Ah, yeah. More box. There's Yusuf pointing stuff out. Yeah, uh, I, this this box had a lot of interesting features, uh, yeah, like really that good. this line. Going across here, yeah, it you has know. it has been reassembled too. Like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's like these these are reused. These these are repurposed granite stones. It yeah. seems like uh, yeah. What? Well, yeah, in, in in my opinion, with about the carbon dating of the stones, I th I think this look. I think what what suits the evidence of what we see here, and I have a whole video on it. I think you know what's below the ground is far more sophisticated than what's above the ground when it, when when you're at the step pyramid, and I think it's quite likely. Uh, he, here's the halite. Yeah, I think it's likely that that the step pyramid was built by third dynasty Egyptians. I just think they yeah. built it over a pre-existing subterranean structure and objects. Uh, and you can see how rough the the pyramid masonry is up there. It's it is fairly primitive, and it is an evolution on the on the on the mastaba idea. Uh, but it's it seems to me that, that the stuff above the ground doesn't remotely match what's beneath the ground in this case. And even more interesting is what's deep beneath the ground here that we got into. But we'll get we'll get to that part of the story uh, yeah. in a little bit here. But yeah, this is yes, some of the tunnels. This, this is the tunnel, and you can see this these crystals here. Yep, on the roof coming out of the ceiling. I don't know how mu how much detail people can see here, but this is some of them. I was trying to capture what it looks like overall, and then up close. Yeah. Uh, they and they they grow in these interesting wavy. Uh, it's they're kind of curly. Like, uh, look at this. You yeah. Know, so it's and and the, they told us, you know, Yusuf told us that these things were much longer. Like they came down out of the ceiling and they had to break them off. They cleared them out of there to get them out of the way. Yeah, he mm -hmm. said they were like eighteen inches long. Yeah. Yep. Here's another one. Here's another one that I found in the wall that I I thought at first this was a fossil, but it's just one of those crystals that grew in a like a spring shape or a coil. And I found these. Very interesting, and I think I feel like this should help us understand how old these tunnels are. But I haven't been able to. I would imagine that that the growth of these depends on how much moisture is in the ground, yep. because the the limestone is porous. Yeah. So if it rains on the surface and then the the water is seeping down, you know, into the deeper parts of the limestone, picking up and dissolving salts. That's what this is, is like the salt coming out yeah, and exactly. recrystallizing. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that. So it would be difficult to figure out. I'm just thinking that it would be difficult to figure out how old it is because you would have to know what the rainfall was. Yeah, right. Well, well, that's the thing. So in, in different places, the um, that halite grows at much different rates. You know, at, at sometimes it, it's... It yeah. could grow. It could take ten thousand years to to grow. You know, six inches, or it could take a few hundred years. It it sort of depends on that moisture content and how much is is flowing down, yeah, into there. You do get salty, imagine... salty glaze in some of the pyramids too, like the red pyramid in some of the chambers there. You, yeah, you, that's it. Sort of starts to form on some of the walls, and the queen's chamber in the Great Pyramid was allegedly like had six inches of like a salty glaze. I don't know if it was specifically halo wow. like this, but uh, you know, they cleaned that all off. I do remember uh, that. Yeah, they had to clean the clean up clean it out of the queen's chamber hmm. well going back to the vase this is one that yeah, i found oh, yeah. very interesting <laughs> you know it's i just incredible. what is it what is this for it's for chips and salsa and sour <laughs> cream and, and the beans around the outside <laughs> beans <laughs> <laughs> exactly yes it's yeah it's the ideal multi-dip hell yeah oh, choose build your own nachos I need one of these yeah. <laughs> yeah. me too <laughs> 
<laughs> well, this 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 piece that piece was documented by um, uh, Jean Pierre Loyer when when he discovered he was the guy that the French uh, archaeologist who kind of cleared out and, and first discovered this cache of all of these jars. Uh, mm. Below this piece is quite well well documented by him. Uh, there's drawings of it and stuff, and it's it's really cool to see this sort of stuff that's also then replicated in books from you know, a hundred oh, years yeah. back. Yeah, um, really cool. Oh, look at this. So the the reason I have this one included in these photos, not that you know, I mean, it does have handles, which makes it difficult to lathe in a way. But I I was fascinated by these gigantic crystal inclusions. Yeah, right. You know, now a lot of them have crystal inclusions, but these are just huge. Uh, yeah, they're huge and very random, randomly distributed. And I feel like this would make any lathing process extremely difficult. Yeah. Like how do you, how do you lathe that without shattering the entire piece as, as your tool moves from, you know, the, the dark material to that crystalline material. And then you still end up with this polish. I don't know. It just, I found this fascinating. Then this one, you know, mm. the, these pieces. Now I think little marks on it too. That looks like alabaster, right? So yeah. that's yeah. it's softer stone. It's but but again, the question is is what is it for? You know. Well, so my point is is that look 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 when you're if you're turning this on a lathe, right? This is where the outside cut is yeah. going to be, yeah. right? And so you can't really lathe this, this portion. Part, yeah, that has to be machined off by something else doing this. Yeah, yeah. and then in order to get these. This scoop out, you know, you'd have to have, and again, it's not directly across from another place where you could imagine a wheel, yeah, could come in and you know cut out ancient ashtray. This... <laughs> yeah, they're right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's Those are from some big Egyptian smokes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Those are some large cigars. <laughs> uh, there's the the schist disc. Looking at that, the schist disc. Yeah, yeah. I I. You know, once again, I'll just say this thing was. I was surprised at how large it is. That's it, why. Yeah, yeah. It's I like, think yeah. both of our, yeah, both of our photos have hands in it because all the ones I've looked at, there's no way to gauge its size. So when yeah. I got in there, I was like, man, this thing is the size. It's like a, a wheel rim. It's like 22 inches across. Right. right. Put that on. Put that on your bins, bro. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, uh, yeah. It, acoustics. People. I've heard all sorts of theories about this thing that it was spinning. Some. If some people think it could have been used to weave rope, like like to spin and, and like weave rope together, possibly. Uh, it's labeled as a decorative oh. vase uh, by the Egyptians, but there's I've heard lots of speculation about uh, having you know a, a acoustical. I, I don't know. Like there's there's a lot of people yeah. that, that have speculated on what some sort of functional um, use for this. But uh, you say what it's for with a lot of these vases. I think a lot of them were just vases. I mean, they were definitely re, a lot of these vases were reused by the Egyptians as canopic vessels, uh, and then they got yeah. around to making their own from things like alabaster. But um, you think they're just decorative, is what you're saying? Like some of them, th this, have this, to be, right? this is just a this yeah. is just a decorative, you know. Maybe like put, some, put some incense in there and some, some craftsman's history. done this, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's the, that's the, oh my the, god. The flint, the flint saber. Yeah, you boys. In there. Yeah. yeah. So Yusuf called this a saw. Um, like, we it? were calling it a sword. <laughs> uh, you can see my, you know, my fingers over there at the end, uh, show, trying to show the scale. It's one hell of a. Um, yeah, it's yeah, Clovis point jesus right <laughs> like kyle kyle said i don't know if it was last week or the week before he was like you know the once again the egyptians the ancient egyptian people just showed up everybody else in the entire world like you think yeah. you know how to you think you can make awesome flint stuff nope oh, look at this <laughs> this is <laughs> one of the most amazing flint pieces i've ever we've ever seen uh yep and let's see yeah that is cool yeah. oh there's so another, here's another one. one yeah so this uh, again it's you just have to wonder what what is the purpose of this. Yeah, it's not going to hold very much stuff. It's got a giant center hole, you know. So it's like um, right. It seems. Yeah, this is a piece. Um, you know how 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 do you turn this on a lathe? Um, right, it has no center. It has no yeah, center. No, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like you you You'd have to hold the. It's like they they can lathe all of this. And then, but they and then they have to out. take it off and then drill the middle out. Yeah, yeah, progressively. And then it becomes really thin. Um, and this yeah. is, you know, a lot of this stuff is relatively thin, but there's some examples of, of like, uh, you know, Petrie said that there was uh, some of these vases had the, had, were no, no, no thicker than a stout playing card, like literally like, like cardboard, like thin cardboard thickness. Yeah. And I have a couple of photos of examples of, vases where you, it's sort of a lot of piece missing so you can kind of see 
uh, how thin some of that material is, and it's just remarkable. Yeah, to, you, well, you can you can kind of see the edge here. Yeah, this is thin. Stroboscope. Right. My chat's it's on a, fire with all these a, suggestions about what this might this be. This is a joke. It's a joke ashtray. <laughs> yes. just, like, yeah. just put it in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. There's, an, uh, there's another uh, flint blade that was similar to the other God, one. That is a fantastic piece. Look it's at that. It's a giant light yeah. bulb holder. Yeah, that is, that's something, isn't it? That's, that's, you, and then the, you guys think you can nap? We can nap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look how thin it is. Yeah. And yeah. then it's, so you can see the handle end or the tang that the part where they would mount something to it is very similar on both 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 of, them. Both of these. Um, <laughs> but like Kyle was saying, they look like single breaks. This is a single cigarette ashtray. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this, this one's definitely an ashtray. <laughs> yeah, look yeah. at that. You can put a lot of smokes on that one. <laughs> but this this Bullshit. is cool. They they made these tiny ones too, and and uh, they're just they, they look. I've got some examples of the tiny ones too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some of those in here too. We'll get to them in a second. You know, it's yeah. but they you know also funny. made these that are gigantic. Like there was one, there was the base of one that was made out of this same kind of stone. Yeah, in the in the bottom. Of oh the, yeah, uh, step, the step pyramid. pyramid. It was just giant, and we were trying oh, to yeah. roll it over. We're like, <laughs> I have it. I I have that video. Yeah, it's like a, this this. It's literally like this, but it's like this thick, and it's just like the bottom yeah. section of That's one of right. these big vases. And you're like, yeah. and like just granite. It's like thud as it. We got it over, and you can see the <laughs> flat base where it's all shaped. It was incredible to get to handle that stuff. Yeah, but you know, it's it was funny. We talk about them being ashtrays, but legitimately, like in the museum. There's a bunch of the big vases that are in there. They put like uh, they've had to put plastic tops over the top of them because they're kind of just standing out. A lot of some of them are outside of the, oh, yeah. the cases because people would legitimately use them as ashtrays. But when you could smoke in the Egyptian museum, people would like, yeah. oh, this is a trash can or something. They're like putting this ashing and throwing <laughs> trash into these you know priceless ancient granite vases that they've dug up from these things. These big ones, they're like, oh, that's a trash can. Like, no, it's, it's not. Of course, put, they <laughs> yeah. put like plastic over the top of them. Stop people doing that. It's hilarious. So this is another one that I. When we looked at it, I was just like, what is this for and how would you do this? You can't yeah. lay the interior of that at all. No. No, that's you can lay it the outside, but I remember seeing that thing. Yeah. You can't lay the the inside at all. So how would they make it? You know, drill it out? I don't know. And <laughs> yeah. then again, what's it for? It doesn't have a bottom. I think it was hollow all the way through. Yeah, it looks right? like it. You can kind of see the glass yeah. on that left quadrant. That's yeah. Yeah, and some of this stuff boggles the mind, and that's that's the other thing. Like, it wasn't just one type of vases, right? They found they found just tons of them in in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And in fact, so much of them were broken. There's just pieces all over the place. There's literally warehouses full of this stuff uh, that no, yeah. has never seen the light of day from where they've cleaned it out. And there was so much of it to this to this to this day. There's still just like piles and piles of these fragments and pieces of these things laying around down beneath the step pyramid. Yeah, um, and they just throwing them around. I don't care. They just toss them around like yeah, like, oh, yeah, no, I, like it's like uh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Find one of those pieces in any other country in the world, and the people are like, oh my god, this is yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And again, sorry for the quality of some of these photos. These things are in dark corners, unlit. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, behind, behind glass. glass. <clears throat> so that's what that's why this one is a little weird. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let me. I got uh, you. Got some more. I got a couple. I want to yeah, go for it. These. Yeah. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll stop. I'll here. stop. Let me go back share. to this thing. Yeah, so let's... Participants can now see your application. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to point out a couple of interesting um, vases as well and then then talk a little bit about like the two industries. I just want to kind of run through that real quick uh, about why this is. I have the same picture of that that same um, alabaster or, or crystal you yeah. know, thing and there's there was like these little shot glasses that go along with it too. I don't know if they'd since been moved, but... <laughs> Little shot, little little crystal shot glasses. They're all nice. So this is one of my favorite pieces. Sorry about the poor quality. Holy crap! Uh, I've got video of this thing. This is one of the best made vases you'll ever see. It's it's. I've shown video of this and pictures of it before. But it, it literally stands on like it's like it's so well made that it it's balanced. It, it almost sits on like the the tip of an egg. This thing. Remember, you could we could see under it and, and yeah. take pictures yeah, of it. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and oh, these are poor pictures, but so here's here's an example of the thinness of of some of this material. You can kind of see um, wow. yeah. on the side there. And again, you talk about large crystal inclusions. Uh, this yes, this is yeah. difficult machining work. Under any circumstances, you have to you know you've got like hard material and the crystals and slightly softer material maybe in the other stone. So you know working this stuff, 
even if it's very hard stone, it can also be very brittle and, and be prone to shattering and, and blowing up. But somehow they work these things down to like incredible thinness and then also polish them to be utterly smooth. Uh, and yeah. then uh, I believe this is the one that Yusuf points out that he says is made of corundum. Oh, man. Um, man. Wow. Which is a nine on the most scale. There's at least one vase in there that I believe is made of corundum. Some people think corundum like, looks like sapphire or something. There's, there are other forms of corundum that it does look differently. But Oh, there um, it is. So I want to show you real quick this, the scale of this because go back. Let's see. I you, think I have that one. Yeah, you do. You want do. Me to, do you want me to... Uh, and then there's this one. Stop sharing real quick. Yeah, the other one. Yeah, let I'll me stop. Yeah, let's see here. Um, yeah, so there, okay, it, is. So there this it is. There it is down the there, yeah. And it's that the one you were showing with the corundum is here. This thing is large. Like, these are, they look small Oops, in sorry. pictures. I've always thought I, – I was surprised by the largeness of these things when we got – when we actually were standing in person. All of yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. there are some really small ones. But in all the pictures, I'm thinking like, okay, it's a vase. You know, you're thinking of a bowl or something. But in some cases, these things are – they are big. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's like a... And there's big plates, big padlock. plates like that as well. Yeah, it's a little padlock on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And but anyway, yeah, I was trying to, to see if I had... Like these these things, this is like three feet tall. Yeah. Yeah. These things yeah. are huge. Is this the one you were showing just a minute ago? Uh, yep. I think that's the one that's broken on the side there if you, if you get real yeah, close so to it. It's, yeah. It's close to a, a little foot piece tall. Missing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they, yeah. that was all. I just wanted to try to get yeah, some yeah. scale to it. Yeah. Let me. Uh, let me. And the, go back to this. Real yeah. Quick. Those cabinets. Those cabinets are deep too, and they're they're the pieces are often far away from the glass, so it's very difficult to get. You know the kind of photos you want to get. You can't even get right. close, and there's a glare, and yeah. yeah. Let me. Did I did I grab these little ones? These little tiny ones. Because they also go down the them. the other the other end. Um, uh, let me find it real quick here. Uh, I have them also with I, some scales. I have oh, one. This. Uh, where is it? iPad. It's it's in here. So this this is in. So th just a, a quick note on the reuse, and then I want I do want to tell that story about the two industries. But so a lot of these were reused, and this these are examples of the mud lids, the stoppers that they would build. Uh, they would put on top yeah. of these jars when they'd reuse them as canopic vessels. It's like I've always wondered, like if you can make these incredible vases and jars in all these different shapes and sizes. Surely you could make some lids for them, but uh, at least yeah. the, so assuming they were inherited and the dynastic Egyptians couldn't actually make them like that, they would make lids like these. And in fact, there's still some of these lids down beneath the step pyramid just laying around as well. Um, oh, I, ha I have I have this thing here as well. I have those, uh, oh, yeah. A couple of those Much examples of, of those guys, which is a weird, almost like an extrusion nozzle or something. Um, yeah. Let me find it here. Here we go. I have one of these. I know my finger's in one of them, but I think this one here is really cool because you, you have the screw head Yep. for reference. Yeah, that's so good, so yeah. They, they scale down as well, right? You have these yeah. tiny little objects like these. Um, these two vases of dolerite marble. Um, that one's cool. The the one with the lid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yep. yeah. Little machined they're lid. Together. Crazy. Well, so it's that like a, they're connected. Yeah, yeah it's but weird. That lid's broken. It looks like it snapped off there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tiny, tiny see. little guys. With, I'm, yeah. That's my finger on top of the display case. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. again, the question <laughs> I have to ask every time is, what is this for? Like, what yeah. What would you do <laughs> with for a vase? It's for a very you small know. cigarette, Ross, that one. That's, that's <laughs> a tiny little doobie. <laughs> I, have a, I have one of that. Let me show you these. Um, uh, I think they, they must have held the ninja, you know, smoke escape. Like, <laughs> right? That's, you just need a little tiny one for that, for your little vial of alchemical smoke yes. ninja escape plan. And like that, plan. he was gone. So, yeah, there's a... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Another, and then, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, these are from the side. Yeah, it's this just, is, I mean, it's amazing work, too. Yeah, so, make, make, that dust. Dust. make that Johnson. Make that Johnson. Just around just it. Loud. Just larger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, you can I see think the, I have one of this. You can see the weave the, of the the cotton. Oh, look at that! Yeah, that, and it's got the handles too. Like they literally yeah. drilled like the the little handles through it as well. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the other piece that you had taken a picture of back yep. there with the, the screw, screw line. The oh, screw and there's the, 
connected there's piece a connected right piece. there. Yeah. Oh, it is. Con I see what you mean. Yeah, it's like a. It's, yeah, that's two that's two of them like connected to, together. It's a tiny yeah. pipe. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so these there were so many of these, and they're just, you know, there's display cases scattered all over the the museums, and you can find them in random spots. And every every display case that had these in it had some kind of mind boggling question. Yeah, you know, where you look at it and you say, "What is what is this? Or how did they do that? Or what are these even for?" You know, it, it in some ways it reminds me of, um, it, like like you said, Ben. They're just it. They're they're maybe they're just uh ornamental you know it didn't necessarily had to have a reason to exist it was just beautiful that little tiny pot i th i, I think i think there's uh certainly a case to be made for that the, there so assuming if we go with the inherited version like so let's just let's just just for the sake of argument chat we, we can and i see you <laughs> a few arguing in there about this stuff it's great um uh, <laughs> I need to get up, i need to get up your pull your chat up yeah so. and uh it, it bit bit i it, there's definitely a case to be made that some of this stuff was ornamental or or decorative, right? Because I think the statues fall into the same category. They're not functional. There's there's absolutely to me a, a class of like functional objects, and and some of these objects like a schist disc, like some of these weird shaped things, may well have have been functional. But I think a lot of the other stuff probably served the purpose of of just as uh, of what they are, like a, a beautiful piece of artwork brought from stone, yeah. and and you know it's just it is just decorative. Uh, I mean, I, I can't imagine there's some, there may, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It just, it, I don't, I can't envision any sort of functional purpose for a lot of those things. But I think there's, there is evidence to, to suggest that there were other objects like that. And in particular, the statues, things like that, not necessarily functional. The boxes, the slabs, the obelisks, on the other hand, I think they may have, well, and even the sites themselves uh, with the channel blocks that run underneath them, the big, the big bowls with piping yeah. connections to them. I think all that stuff strikes me as being, as being functional uh, one way or the other. Let me, I'm just trying to find step pyramid. Here we go. Uh, there's an image here that I want to share of, I mean, I can show you like this step, what, what here, maybe I'll, I'll do this. I'll, um, let me share this app again. Uh, where are we? Share. Uh, yeah, this. So let me show you some pictures of what that looked like. And like, so here's example. You guys are seeing this. Yeah. So these are examples of of when Jean Pierre Laurier first found all of these things beneath the step pyramid. That that's they were kind of in just like a, a, a just a massively, you know, dilapidated and, and all broken. But there's there were lots of like individual like finished pieces in there. But these this is kind of the, the original, uh, oh what those tunnels look like <laughs> and. And and what it was, you know, what the state of these things were when he dug down under there. So just no end of them. Um, there's like whole heaps of them here in this uh, oh in this tunnel down there. Um, you know, just tons of this stuff. It's just quite the treasure hoard. And you can actually see some of these are solid too. You've got ones like this that like piece C here. To me, is one that hasn't actually been hollowed out. It was it was solid, uh, or it might it might even be a lid on top of that. I don't know, but. Um, I think you you do have some. Mm. We have some examples of of vases that aren't quite finished. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot of that type of thing. Uh, there's one other image that I had here. Yeah, I wonder. I where is it? You know, we yeah, it we is, had talked yeah. about this the other day. The possibility that um, these jars, these stone, the stoneware was actually collected by the people who built the pyramid, or used the tunnels underneath as burials. And like brought them down there as part of their, some kind of, in other words, they're reusing them. They they find ancient artifacts and they're putting them down there with their yeah, dead you know relatives or whatever it is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, well, that seems to be the case. Uh, Viper Chris, thank you so much for that super chat. Um, cheers. Um, this is this is the the site that I mentioned earlier. So this was a burial that they carbon dated back to about twelve to fourteen thousand years old, and these are stone vessels that are in there. It's not a great shot. <laughs> Um, so the, and these are a similar type of stone vessel than the ones we, then we see, they're not clay or anything. These were, these are also stone vessels. Um, and this Beresite, by the way, doesn't exist anymore. It was, it was flooded after they, um, they built the Aswan dam, uh, but pre-dynastic, like well and truly pre-dynastic. Yeah, God dang it. Right. And, and that's, which leads me to like, okay, so, so how 
can we attribute these vases to um, the dynastic Egyptians? So let, let me let me go yeah. back quickly to this, and we'll, we'll walk through this because I think it's I think it's an important um, uh, bots live podcast. Here we go, step pyramid and jar. So I think it's an important story to to let people know. So so the main reason and the way that that, that the mainstream attributes this is based yeah. pretty much on this by this. This is a scene on the wall. You can find this in the Saqqara Museum. So what you see here is. Guys using what is clearly like weighted objects, maybe flint, uh, and they're spinning them, right? They're hollowing out vases. You can see this guy with his hand inside this this big, large vase. There's guys working these tools. Uh, so they'll tell you that, all right, this this explains, and this comes from the, the Third Dynasty, uh, and it's all attributed to Imhotep, who was the famous guy, you know, the guy from the, the Mummy movie, but maybe a little less dramatic in... Uh, in real life, but he was the polymath. You know, this guy was a genius. He was supposedly came up with the design for the step pyramid, and he also came up with the process for manufacturing these vases, uh, yeah. which doesn't make a lot of sense because we know that a lot of these vases and stoneware that we find uh, does go back to the first dynasty, the first dynasty and beyond. But here's the difference: this is the kind of stuff that Imhotep was making. Yeah. So you, you, when you look at what they found in third dynasty and after. You, you, you start to find two categories of stoneware. You have this type of stuff, and then you have the precision, incredible stone vases made of very hard stone. All of these types of things, uh, we have examples like this. We have more examples like these. Uh, these are better examples, but look closely. Like You can yeah, still a see. Wonky. little yeah. wonky, not quite straight. These are made from alabaster, much softer stone than granite or schist or diorite or any of the other corundum yeah. <laughs> crazy things that these vases were made from. Um, I mean, I'm not complaining. Those are no, awesome. They're beautiful, but, but they're just they're clearly not the same level of yeah of precision, symmetry, and precision. Stone. Yeah, yeah. So th that's that's what's what's going on. I think. I think that, and I think that actually is a better case for explaining um, the evidence that we see and why we have stone vessels that go back all the way to the first dynasty. And I and I'm convinced long before that as well. Uh, these things would have been precious. I mean, if we had them, if, you know, we've inherited them today. We treat them as precious. If the ancient Egyptians had found these, had inherited those stone objects, they would have treated them as precious. Probably yeah. why they buried forty or fifty thousand of them with a particular king down in these yeah. tunnels underneath the step pyramid. And then Imhotep was must have been looking at them, and he he developed the techniques that then enabled them to make these vases. And they continued to do that. Like right down, you you go look at the canopic jars from. King King Tut's the the stuff that we found intact. I mean, a lot of that stuff's made from alabaster, and it's you know the results of generations and generations and generations of craftsmen getting better and better at, at working this type of material. Uh, but it still, it nothing they ever did reflects the the precision, the symmetry uh, in in that stonework of those early vases. And so, to me, it's like I think what we're looking at is a pretty clear situation of inheritance. I think it's yeah. a lot of these vases are much much older. Um, and the dynastic the precision, Egyptians couldn't make them, yeah. So they tried to make these. Yeah, the precision and the materials, the materials, the hardness and the thinness. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, those those jars, those those big ones that we were looking at, they're incredibly thick. They yeah. weren't working them down to a sixteenth yeah. of an inch in thickness like they were some of these right. these hard hard stones. Yeah, with yeah. crystal yeah. inclusions and everything. I mean, it's just yeah. Yeah, it's insane. It, it, I mean, here's some other. I love these couple of pieces just randomly in the museum. Like this is a big piece that's got a, car, a cover over it, just a box. But then you have this one too, which is uh, this one wasn't. I couldn't find that on this occasion. Like, this is a picture from 2016, but it's like that's four cool. of the biggest damn tube drills I've seen into wow. a big granite centerpiece of something. Um, but yeah, oh, that was a cool jar too. Yeah, you know this thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another one with the little holes in it, little mm. and all the, the back size crystal, of those crystals. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's I think awesome. that's a it's tiny like one. I think this is tiny as well. This is a quite small um, uh, vase. Yeah. What uh, the one last thing we maybe we can move on from the step pyramid, um, unless you guys want to talk more about it. But the one last thing I wanted to mention is like down in the well. Maybe we'll tell the story about what where we actually went. Um, but as you go down, so where that box was, this, this big giant box that we were looking at, right? This is like level four or something or three or four. So around the corners of these, it's, it's, it's a truly labyrinthian. You, you go down steps and then passages branch out. They go left, they go right, they go all over the place. Uh, yeah. you, can, you could definitely get lost down there um, if you had full access to everything. Um, but down in there, you, not only do you find all these, these fragments of vases and everything else, you also find 
lots of machined alabaster. So it wasn't, you know, there was lots of other pieces of alabaster. And here's an example of uh, a piece that has a, a tube drill on it. And I've got, I've got other pictures of like square corners, machining marks and tube drills in alabaster. But uh, not many people know this, but during the renovation period, uh, they pulled up something like 60 or 70 tons worth of this stuff from those tunnels beneath the step pyramid. They took, and it was all machined in chunks of alabaster. There's still a bunch of it down there that you can see. We found one big piece of alabaster with a tube drill in it down underneath it. But they brought up like 60 or 70 tons of this stuff and they just bulldozed it behind the step pyramid. Yeah, they, they buried it in a bunch of they, limestone and sand. Yeah, they, they, they piled it all up behind the step pyramid and bulldozed it. And if you go around behind the step pyramid, you're like up on a, up on a le it's like you're above the ground level and you, you're basically yeah. walking over what this tilled earth that... They the, built the terrace, it. basically. Yeah, big terrace that's like 60 or 70 tons of this stuff is down uh, buried beneath it. Um, I don't know why they did that, but we used to be able to find little pieces like this, lots of like tube drills, and I've, I've got some other really good shots of stuff from a previous trip there. But nowadays you, you can't find many pieces laying around out there, but it's all sort of buried in the ground, and we don't really know why. Kind yeah, of crazy. Yeah, we were, uh, we were kind of, you know, walking around the slope, you know, the edge of that terrace and kind of, you know, looking around just a little yeah. bit, uh, <laughs> checking out some alabaster, and then yeah, we got the old Ramses the second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ramses the second, drop tools. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Well, the well, the one other thing that that is probably worth telling people is that we did get to go down to where they were working in in the step pyramid. So so got down to like the fifth level or something, and this was it's not just a matter of going down some stairs either. It's like a forty plus foot ladder that drops you down a shaft to like another another level down below and uh they didn't want us taking photos or um or video down there but down there we, we found like giant alabaster boxes like machine machined precision yeah. boxes yeah that's um, right yeah in, amazing and, and i don't think they've ever been documented um uh as far as i know like i haven't found anyone talking about the fact that there's big old you know machined alabaster boxes down at these in these depths below this level and apparently there's other levels but that's where they're actually still clearing stuff out they're still excavating uh so they don't really know what the extent of the catacombs and the labyrinth down there down there is <laughs> yeah that's right we the the archaeologists showed us another tunnel right yep. that they still have it dug out yeah yeah level six will yep. will sessions 50 bucks thanks so much will you guys remember will from the scablands yeah yeah absolutely will, will says hi man cheers thanks well, cheers. buddy yeah yeah Good on you, man. But yeah, that's right, well, a. Speaking of that, uh, yeah, break time. indeed, okay. indeed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to uh, give a shout out to Arno. Arno, he gave us some some badass beers from Belgium. We we uh, decided we were. Are gonna... we taking a break? No, I mean just a uh, beer break. break. Yeah, okay. beer break. We're gonna yeah. just yeah. open some beers. The, the watcher is here. Oh yeah. Should I just get him inside? Yeah. Might All right. Well. Let me let me tell it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, appreciate it, buddy. I'm not leaving. I'm just gonna get the. All right. So yeah, Arno uh, came back from Belgium. He brought us all like a, a, a fancy Belgian beer. This is the Orval, apparently uh, brewed by this one's brewed by monks or something. So uh, I am not yeah, sure. Yeah, you got. <laughs> this is Grimbergen. Grimbergen. Oh, that triple yeah. triple. Well, cheers, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. Russ cheers. drank his in the hotel. He didn't know the plan. I didn't know that was the plan. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I'm mosquito proof for the children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and welcome to Watcher. But yeah, um, let's see. While you guys sort that out, let me share a couple. What other what what topic? Because there's that was that's we've kind of uh, like spent a bunch of time on the uh, like yeah, an so hour talking here. about the step pyramid. But there's a billion other things that were of interest. Here we go. Let's let's go here. Uh, so, Menkara. I I never am sure exactly how to say this. You know, Yusuf said Menkara. Menkara. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but this this was this was a fascinating site for me. You can kind of see, uh, so we discussed this on the audio show, but all this rubble is leftovers from this, uh, from these casing stones. Yeah, all the granite. Yeah. Right. And apparently, I mean, was this, you know, do you know, was this supposed to have been cased all the way up in this granite or was it just the bottom couple of levels? Or? I thought it was like the bottom, I want to say like 12 or 15 story. I mean, we don't really, I don't think we really know. Uh, I yeah. don't. I think most people think it wasn't fully cased, but it was much. It was up higher than this, like maybe twice the the height, which is weird right. because 
you know, the middle pyramid, it, it, you used certain that it was the bottom two cases of the middle pyramid were cased in granite. A lot of other people think it was just one. And with this one, I, I haven't, I guess someone said something to me about it. And, oh, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Delisle from uh, ah, Scablands. Hey, hey, 20 bucks, mate. Delil. Delil. Nice. Kyle. Kyle Cheers, Delil, man. yeah. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks well, for there, is, there, there is casing stone rubble around this, but it's only granite, as far as I yep. remember. Yep. Which means if there was some other kind of casing stone up higher, gone. that rubble's all gone. Yeah. Which is interesting. But yeah. anyway, so the reason I was really interested in this to go see this is because of this spot here yep. near this entrance. And I've got better pictures, but I just want to... this, You know, this, this just shows you, Smooth like you can out. see from far away, you can see all the nubs... Uh, and the interesting polygonal work here. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go to the very next. regular courses, though, which yeah. is um, yeah, that was. Course. It's not, you know, in, in other words, it's different in that respect. Too. Right? Yeah, they have lines, but there, it's. I wonder if that's because they're matching the. I mean, the core could, masonry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You could yeah. you could make uh, non-straight courses and you know, fit them into those blocks, but yeah, this is a really good beer. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is tasty. Was your beer good? It is. Yeah, Do you yeah. remember? It was good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking alone. Once in it got hotel. once it got cold in that fridge, I just I came came down to my room one night and polished it off. That was the only thing I had in there to drink. Uh, yeah. So more images from the side. This is I was trying to show scale here. Yeah. Um, how big these courses are. So here's some people sitting. You know, you can see half the course they're sitting on, and then the course above. So they're. I mean, these big are large balls. stones. Yeah. yeah, and they do, they're pillowy, right? This is the term we're using. Mm -hmm. They kind of protrude, uh, they protrude out. And there's interesting, there's negative, you know, reverse nubs, I guess you might call them on some of these. Here's some normal nubs. Yeah. And then these, like, that looks like it's been broken off. That's not a nub, bro. <laughs> these are not real nubs. <laughs> yeah, I've been told that I actually don't know what actual nubs are. But so. you can see also, um, it's it's similar here, right? These yeah. These protrude more downward. Uh, yeah. There's even these hollows on the, you know, this yeah. is the protrusion on the outside of the block. It's kind of hard right. to see here, but down underneath you can see it's hollowed. It's in. got this hollow. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and I'm sure you you get to it, but there's the the scoop marks, that particularly on that bottom layer, right? That we'll get, maybe we'll get to the scoop marks in a minute because there's I think that's yeah. that's a real uh, connection between that and the quarry. But yeah, this is where they they were. This is that mystery of like, well, did they down tools? Did they only mean to like flatten this part of it out? Um, right. So this is this is the right side of the flattened area that's near this the entrance, right? So if you go back here, we're looking at, we're looking right here. I'm I'm taking a picture looking up right yep. along this, yep. this right here. And so, seeing this that's section funny. here made me wonder if they intended to do this to the entire thing. So like Ben was saying, did they down tools and never come back, right? So back to this, I'm looking up, I'm standing and looking up on the right side here, and you can see how that their their tools seem to not care where the blocks were, right? Yeah. It's like they're just, just like, it's almost like they're just scraping it away, and they and when they do it this way, it cleans up the entire all the pillowy pillowiness of the rest of the blocks and makes this beautiful flat mm -hmm. face with these very clean joins that in some cases have things like this. We've gone around a corner. Or yeah, there's like this that. little joint here, right? Yeah, that's that's a really good observation. I've not seen that on that before. But yeah, and that's not that's not easy to do. Like that must have been cut right. into that that block on the bottom, right? Yeah. Like and again, remember that remember that this whole thing is at the angle of the pyramid too. So it's yeah, you're it's, talking about a, a, a very interesting Yeah, because uh, okay, the angle of the pyramid as it's sloping upward here these blocks are not like the say the edges that we the sides of the blocks that we can't see that go back towards the core masonry of the pyramid they're not sloped uh what is it perpendicular yeah they're right. not perpendicular no, they're, they're horizontal this. yeah they're like flat so, to the yeah. ground yeah. yeah which means it's, that yeah it's like it's it's a complicated angle for cutting yeah. that thing yeah that, right yeah it's, oh, there's some there's some nubs at the bottom there big mm -hmm. ones and see again to me it, once i started seeing those tool marks and i'll get back to this but these look like they've been planed off yeah that's by right. the same tool that was doing that exactly, work exactly yeah 
right? They they get mm-hmm. rid of these. They get and Kyle was talking about this too on the audio show. This may have been big nubs sticking out, and they remove them. They can get them out of the just, way. Just yeah. just scoop them off because they're in the way for yeah, the rest of the like work. That. Yeah, so here's the left side of that. Now you can see some very faint inscriptions. Uh, inscriptions here, mm-hmm. uh, which you know is interesting. But I'm really this is what I'm really interested in here is this work in general where they were just flattening this stuff. Now they they chose not to do these Above. these course, courses up here. They started I, with this course. Yeah, I'm wondering if they actually did this flattening before they put those other courses on because they we had have, talked about yeah. this that. If you're going to build a door in the way that um, they've been described on the exteriors, that that they had some kind of door that had a hinge that was able to be opened or whatever, the block was able to rotate in some way to allow entry. Right. You wouldn't want to have right. pillowy blocks right. there in when you're way. trying to right. make that when you're trying to make that very fine connection with that door. It's supposed to you know look yeah. like a normal block. So you would have to flatten it like like if you're planning to flatten the whole surface, mm. go ahead and flatten this part, make the door. Yep. But you're still continuing the courses going up. Yep. You know, this is just another job. You, you know, what's happening. interesting is that they, 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 you remember at the back of this pyramid, there's a section just like this as well. Yes. Yes. So, but, and right. it doesn't seem section. to be an entrance or there's a door. There's a door in there. Bro. Right. It could be. <laughs> there's a yeah, door. It might be. There's a door in there. <laughs> so here's, here's, exa- <laughs> like, here's an example. Of also, this is a notch, not a nub on this yeah, block. Yeah, that is here. a notch in there. Yep. Yeah. So it, you know, more and more, Kyle and I are looking at these as being lifting things. Uh, they, or some, maybe not lifting the whole stone, but in a, adjusting a, something to use it to maneuver the stone. And it may, it, that may not be the case all the time, but in a lot of cases, I think that's that's what it was. Uh, and then what these Sand ones paper. where it's, these ones where you're like they, you can't use that to lift anything. I think they've just been just chopped off. Chopped off. It seems like it. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. In the ant- in the antechamber of the Great Pyramid, there's the, one of the blocks that's when you go in. Yep, yeah, there's a nub in there. There's that flat block that's like separated from the wall, and it looks you know what they call a portcullis. Mm-hmm. Maybe I I don't know. Mm-hmm. It has a nub on it that's been sh- flattened. Yep. But yep. the underside of it is is very flat and perpendicular to the surface of the stone. Okay. So it could be used to for something to prop it. Up, like if it was, if that whole block was slid up, yeah, you could put something in there to like hold it in place. I, I do have even photos. It's a very of that low profile. profile. Yeah, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I have photos of that thing in that antechamber. But yeah, it's there's some there's some notches here. So go, this is the, go back to the one yeah. before that. So you can can't quite see, but do you have photos of the scoop marks at the bottom where they've got that um, material removal? I think one of the first ones had it. So they're along the bottom line of that uh, of that other photo where um, Professor was sitting down. Yeah, they're kind of there. And that next one maybe on the bottom right. Yeah. So see here, ah, like on the bottom right, bigger. you have this right a similar scoop mark. And on the left side, they're a little faint and hard to see. But on this bottom line, it seems to be the same type of these scooping marks that yes, that you get at the right. quarry. And you, there, Yusuf, yeah. Yusuf pointed this out. That uh, And I, I know I've got These. some footage of it and stuff too. Yeah, so there's... It's the same thing you see at the granite quarry in Aswan. It's just like whatever they were using some tool to, to scoop that granite. Um, yeah. And, and we have some too, interesting, a... yeah, real interesting. You guys made some real interesting observations about the, the angles of the scoop marks in, in the quarry uh, at Aswan. But it's, yeah, it have seems that. like yeah, that, so that we're, tool we're, I, was here. We'll stay on this. We'll get there. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I'm working my way there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you're right there, and there is anomalous or interesting scoops on these. The reason I took these pictures is because I was trying to show how cleanly the, the or clean the inside edges of these blocks are. Some of them you can see, like this one. Yeah, it's missing the next block. It's not as clear in this photograph as it was when we were there. But th- this block, for example, the front of it's all pillowy and sort of not finished. But that this oh, is this a is finished perfect. edge. Yeah. That was meant to be seated against another block. I've got a couple more. That's a great yeah. observation too. Yeah, there on right. the left here. And the look le- how it's got one right there over there. The, yeah, there. look at this. Yeah, and oops. Yeah, and then look how it's yep. fitted to this core masonry. Oh wow, yeah, that that's oh. actually really cool. I've not, I didn't notice that. That yeah, it's shaped, it's shaped to fit the weird, right structure of that core masonry so so that made me wonder if this granite casing is actually not part of the original project or 
somehow this core masonry got a, at least a little bit eroded before they put this in there. That's a good point, because so you I, see the same thing I'm, in the Valley Temple, right? Right. Yeah. I'm kicking myself because I, I've been planning to get some photographs of the erosion patterns on our native, you know, natural oh, yeah, limestone yeah, here in the area. Yep. I was on the way to the studio uh, the week after we got back, and I was going through a, you know, I just, I look over on the right, there's a, there's a wall, and it's eroded, and it looks very similar Mm. to some of the erosion patterns I saw. And I was like, oh, man, I should get a picture. But then I was like, well, this is a road cut. You know, this is this is maybe 50 years old. I don't know. I would have to look up yeah. you yeah, know, county old? county records to see when they last <laughs> came through here. And But that is a, it's still an it's, interesting point. Now, I don't know what the ages, hardness yeah. of that limestone yeah. is, but if it only took 50 years for that limestone to go from a straight wall that they cut to this wavy profile of erosion with the amount of rainfall we get that's that's good data like if if they were building this structure and then 50 years later it's like eroding away before they'd finished it yeah uh Mm -hmm. then then this could be the same builders you know the 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 valley temple with its granite casing could be the same builders as the ones who put the core masonry of the valley temple there. yeah if there was if there was like serious rainfall in between the two projects yeah yeah yeah. And I mean, if you give it a couple of generations, like, you know, the, they're just like, well, we need yeah. to case this in something harder. Yeah, it's falling apart. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thank you, Sebastian. Sebastian says hi in the chat. He super chatted me. Oh, hey. just thanks, Sebastian. And also Vipercrest, thank you again, man. Cheers for that super chat. Yeah. Sebastian, hey, nice uh, nice footage in uh, Ben's latest video there, Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Sebastian. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Thanks to all the super chats going to Ben. <clears throat> Sorry yes. I got in your yeah. way, yeah. Sebastian. <laughs> I will. We will, so this, we will split the super chats. We're good. <laughs> All right. This is this is just a picture of the rubble around the outside. One of the piles of rubble. You can see flat faces in here that were. I think were in inside uh, faces. You know, these yep. were meant to sit against another block. Yep. Uh, so just quarry it's rubble. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. This is quarry rubble. People removing the bl- granite. But again, it's just granite. There isn't any. At least not that I saw. Maybe there is somewhere. Or maybe it's been cleaned away. Either rubble of of tura or any other type of stone that might have cased the pyramid so i don't know all right this is the um what would you call this the, the, <laughs> the mortuary this the pyramid temple, pyramid temple. temple. Yeah, yeah the mortuary, mortuary temple. temple or pyramid temple yeah, yeah. of the, of men of the menkara pyramid yeah so again we've come around the corner like if you're looking at the face of it we're going around the left side this is live. uh and again you can see how heavily eroded the top of this is yeah uh, I mean, assuming all it, that the lower part was probably buried in sand, right? Yeah. Some of this was probably buried, but what is you know, like, what is this? Um, yeah. What is this? Yeah. Now this I, might be quarrying attempts, you know, but it seems to be in a weird spot fizzy for bin. somebody who's trying to break up that stone. You think they would put it like down here? I don't know. Right. Like, I don't know what this. Is. Strange. I, it is, and it's. You know, so this has been fascinating to me lately, the, the erosion that we see. So it's not just the, the the famous case of erosion on the Giza Plateau, right? It's, it's the, the, the walls of the Sphinx enclosure, and everyone likes to talk about yeah. that. But you see tremendous erosion in in these structures, not just this um, pyramid temple, but the one that what's left of the middle pyramid complex. Incredible mm-hmm. erosion in these limestone blocks. Now, uh, we did... Um, we did a, a Q and A. So Randall Carlson was really kind enough to to, to spend some time with the uh, the tour oh, yeah. group after we got back from Egypt, and we sat down and did a Q and A. And I, I did a, I recorded it. I'm going to make it a, a a patron video and share it with those um, tour participants, and maybe it'll come out on the Cosmographic channel or, or you know in some time I'll put it up on my channel. But Randall got into a lot of the studies that have been done, particularly things going back to like the 50s and 60s, even earlier, that that specifically looked at rates of limestone erosion under under different circumstances so you know coastal erosion where you, you've got it immersed in water you've got flowing water going over the top of it you have other examples of of you know with heavy rainfall uh and so there's been some experiments done to look at, at how long does it take to actually create uh erosion on limestone like this in different circumstances yeah. and i think that my my takeaway from that was like any way you cut it you you that, that type of erosion doesn't could it's almost impossible to think that that stuff that could happen within the time frames of the the orthodox story. So three, three and a half thousand, four thousand years ago, like it, it, it seems like you, you right. you're talking tens of thousands of years to to get to that level of erosion on a lot of this limestone, based on a lot of the studies that have been done looking specifically at limestone erosion. 
Uh, yeah, and no, I think the other thing, yeah. the other thing he was pointing out, it seemed to be, was that he thinks it's a combination of water and sand. Yep. Like in other words, a combination of like you get some erosion during wet periods and then erosion during arid periods, and that's yep. why they have this very distinctive look. Yeah. Um, well, so, and and the other thing he said was like he thinks there was sheet floods involved, and it wasn't may not have been specifically yes. rainfall, but actually water pouring over the top of of this surface. So. You know, yeah. and the other, you know, you got other possibilities, things like acid rain or black rain, but then you've got to go yep. back to periods where you have a precipitating yeah. event that creates that, which is either impacts or volcanism, and in both yep. cases, like you have to go back well before the dynastic Egyptian civilization to find periods where that could happen. Younger Dryas, cosmic incap, yep. perhaps, or, or other examples of uh, of uh, I don't know when there was volcanism that might have affected that area, but um, yeah, it's it's. That I, I'm really interested in learning a bit more about the limestone erosion because that that example it's crazy like yeah it, it, it's yeah ridiculous and I, as you guys said you you see that sort of erosion in the hills around where you live right and you want to take yeah I wish we had some example photos we'll yeah, maybe we'll, we'll get some we'll get some yeah uh, but yeah you're 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 right and Randall said we need to get to limestone quarries old mm-hmm. ones in in Egypt to look at to look at them to to do some comparisons and we didn't do that we went the, to the other, oh, yeah. the other thing is is that the the uh sphinx enclosure erosion is completely different it is this yeah yeah it's like totally. vertical uh, yes yeah it's very very different so it, in no matter which way you, <laughs> no matter what your argument is these are two different processes yeah right um i don't know i didn't see that type of erosion anywhere else that we went no, the, the the sphinx, sphinx enclosure erosion. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that was very interesting to me. Yeah. Well, I think there was some of it on the distant cliff walls outside of the Nile, but not mm-hmm. much. I mean, but you could see some of those vertical cracks out there. But okay. So mm. again, now we're looking at where that mortuary temple butts up against the <laughs> casing stones of the pyramid. Yeah. And. These stones aren't smoothed off. So Kyle and I have been talking back and forth. Like, did they, it, again, if the builders of this, now you can see this has been scooped or yeah. it has this scoop feature. Mm-hmm. Some of these do around here. Like you can, and zooming out, you can see interesting patterns like this here. There's a strange square right here. Like it looks like, you know, they were just facing these roughly. There's a scoop. Yeah. Yep. Right. All along here, you can see it just kind of like they faced them roughly. Here's some, a bunch of, a line of nubs. It's interesting that most of the nub, the big nubs you see on this, I noticed, are on this top layer. Right. You know, yeah. all the way on the other side too. The the ones that are really stand out are mostly up here. So <laughs> this bottom part may have been faced a little bit. Yeah, like they were they were facing this or whatever. But Just this is roughly, the one, you know. But yeah. 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 Very roughly. But so yeah. did they? The question is, did they intend to flatten it out very nice, like they did by the entrance over there and on the other side? Don't know. And yeah. did they down yeah. tools and never come back? And then. Which would imply that they didn't build this, because, or somebody later did Came this, and they, the right, and they built it against the unfinished, Whoa. unsmooth, pillowy, um, it's, facing stuff. It's weird because they finished the other faces, like the side, the sides of these blocks, right? They must, they had to do that to get them in where they were, but yeah. And it, it, it to me, it's like, yeah, they just maybe they didn't care, they didn't need to. Yeah, to make it's them, not necessary. Make to, them to nice finish. and smooth. But then in the right. middle pyramid, there the casing blocks are smooth, like they finished right. it all. Like they're not pillowy. This is the only one that's like pillowy, like this. Although I'm sure you'll get there. We have almost the same exact thing in the Assyrian. Yes, yeah. that's right. So, if you if you make the argument that this is older than this, then you can't make the same argument that this structure on the other pyramids is older than the other. Than the you see what I'm saying yep, like absolutely it, it, to me I, I look at this like if you're if you're planning on facing all of this flat then it doesn't matter you you the less facing you need to do fine they they can they can easily work the limestone against this rough edge yeah and it even in some cases might lock this wall in yeah a little better right. because you've got this. It's not sitting up against a flat face. It's fa- not yeah. a, against a flat face that it can slide on yep. or adjust. It's it's actually fixed. It's it's being held by the you know, these the limestones going in and out of these contours, so it's fitted. Mm. Um and then if you went back and faced it, 
and they face this whole thing. Like if they if they plan to encase this in granite, like they did the other ones, you would never notice it. You would what you would notice if there was granite on the outside of this is that all the joins went around corners because if right. they put the granite up yeah. and then they and faced, faced them it. both off, it yeah. would look like every block went around a corner. Yeah, yeah. which seems to be how they, what we how they did that technique in places like the Valley Temple. Yeah, yeah. and I, I agree with that assessment that, that you want to lock this structure into this one. Yeah. And so having it, ha trying to build it against a flat face is not a good idea because it, you know, it won't be Slide locked around, in. Right. There are other ways to lock it in, but this is one of them, right? You could... If you were all original builders, I would just make the first limestone block, core block of this structure, start from the core block of the pyramid and come out. And then seat right, the granite right. casing against it. Yeah. So and they didn't do that. that it's yeah. actually locked in. Right. Maybe yeah. it is. I don't know. I couldn't tell. Yeah, we couldn't get in there. through the casing. I don't think so. Yeah. Although yeah, it, 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 that, that might be residue on that granite block there or just chunks yeah. of limestone falling all over it. Interesting. But, what, but you have this stuff in that structure too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. I have no idea. Like the scoops you were talking about, the patterning of the blocks on the walls, mm -hmm. potentially that's like a prep for other things that are going to be put in against those blocks to hold them sort of encased and socket them the same way. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Can you hear, can you hear yeah. him? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Soft, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, so again, so back to the picture here. On the inside of that mortuary temple, we found these. Mm -hmm. And I find the facing of these, initially that's what I noticed was how they're interestingly faced. Yeah, like now in, there's, inset there, or something. Yes, there's this, you know, they didn't do the edges. They just nicely faced the inside of the block and left this rough edge around all of them in a very interesting way. And there was, we saw this, was it in the Queen's Chamber? Queen's Chamber Corridor around wall. the entry of the door, there was the same feature. You guys can't hear. What? Uh, sorry, chat's saying they can't hear. You guys can hear me now, right? We yeah, can, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, and then okay, maybe they're just saying they couldn't hear the watcher loud, but I think oh, yeah. I don't think I, I don't think anything's changed here. So his mic's not on yet. I I can't really turn it on without doing a bunch of. Okay, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what you get for coming late, buddy. Yeah. Get on, get up on the mic. <laughs> it's all good. His mic is not working. He'll have to, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you had headphones either? So anyway, uh, this these were interesting, you know, and I, I don't know. This is this is not the same kind of granite as what's facing the no. uh, right. This is grano diorite. This is like the stuff yep. that the Serapium boxes are made of. Yep. Right. Yep. Grano diorite stuff like that. Yeah, grano yeah. diorite, a different kind of stone. Still fine joins. Um, mm -hmm. large blocks. These may be nubs down here that, that are gone removed. mostly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but again, and this is, it was tough to get a good photo of this, but in multiple places you could see that these blocks were set and formed, the backs of them are formed against the already eroded, limestone or maybe it was just a pillowy. Now that we're talking about it, it could have just been that the limestone was just pillowy and they, they didn't face it at the time. I don't know, but it looks like they were fitted to the erosion, yep. like how this sticks way out. I, I see masonry like masonry marks here. You know, This is hammer and chisel yeah. marks, it looks like. Yep. All these lines going down here. Thanks, Nick. Cheers. Yeah, so the, if this is fit against an already degraded original limestone wall then it implies that this is much later yep. or at least somewhat later than this yeah and it's 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 the same case in the valley temple like that and that's what robert shock yeah. sort of looked at too and he seemed to think that the granite was fitted to the already eroded limestone um right on that structure which is you know yeah how ancient is it then like how how long did that thing right. have to be standing to get the erosion and then at what point if it was was it even the dynastics or before dynastics or was it another period that they went and fitted a lot of granite to this stuff to case it right it's kind of hard to say right so in, in the let me flash through a bunch of photos here in the end the questions i have here are first about this part uh this part right here did they intend to do this to the whole thing mm. And if they did and they never got around to it, then this spot where the temple meets yep. this, it, it implies uh, that somebody else did this, that, that somebody else built this. Because if those, if those workers did intend to do this to the whole thing, 
Are they building the mortuary temple and not facing the? Uh, maybe they did. Yeah. You know, I yeah. guess they could be building this structure and not facing this stuff because they intend to do it at the end of everything and they never got around to it. Well, they're going to case that in granite too. It just, you know, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Were there? Do you know if there were granite casing stones on the outside of this at all? I don't. Right. I don't know. I mean, so there definitely were on um, the structure that was at the uh, in the middle, the middle pyramid. But I don't know about this one. Right. Although we have it so on the inside. The, so. What I'm saying yeah. is, is this this at least looks like two stages and possibly three stages of construction with periods enough time in between each stage for erosion to take place. Yeah, which is you know silly. Right. Because then you have these fitted to yep. erosion of this structure. Yeah. So I don't know. That, yeah, the, that was these my... are a real mystery. Those ones there are just like a super mystery to me. Like that, where, where yeah. these blocks and what their purpose was. Maybe right. this whole thing was lined, but then you have these big protrusions that seem to be... Yeah. This is the new version of Nubs. <laughs> this is the <laughs> new Nub version. This is version Nubs 2.0. Nubs it's like, 2.0. look, <laughs> we can just leave this whole thing and then we can pry on it wherever we want. Instead yeah. of just at the nub that Jots left on there. <laughs> <Jots>. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, moving from there, let's go to. Um, uh, well, let's look at the. Let's you look at some granite to, real quick. Yeah. Nice one. yeah. You wanted well, to look I, at, the, at the, wanna, the large form crystals. I do want to point this that. out. Let's say granite diorite or diorite. This is granite straight diorite. Di straight diorite or something. Yeah. You know. Of the same kind of those blocks. Now this is in the Valley Temple, yep. but this is the kind of rock that's face that, that we were just looking at, facing the inside mm -hmm. of uh, of the, of the Menkarab, Temple. and it's just this random one of these in yep. the Valley Temple yep. at the bottom. Super famous. So it block, doesn't. This one. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem to be a repair because it's load bearing, right? You couldn't have no moved this out and replaced it unless it's just a plate. It could be a veneer. I don't know. No, I, I think it's a block. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, and I do want to show people. Some close-ups of the granite here. So, yeah, this is a join vertical in the join. valley temple, right? And you, uh, it, well, there's a there's a horizontal here and a vertical. Yeah, they're very difficult to see. Number one, because they're so incredibly thin, but also because this granite is is decomposing. Uh, it's falling apart, you know. Which I want to know how long that takes for this granite to do that. Right, because that, that's the point people should remember. That it's, it's, it looks rough now, but th this was all originally like just glassy smooth. There was, right. There's a few spots and examples of where, where you still have that final polish uh, on the temple, but you, you, you've kind of had this, what did, uh, what did Randall call ablation or something's happened to the surface of the, yeah. of the granite where it starts to flake off on the surface. And again, that's a really good question. It's like, how long does, does that take uh, right. on, on granite, you know? Right. How long does it take? Now, this uh, I've, I've been pointing out that this is coarse grain granite, so you can see the grain size. Yeah, huge chunks. You know, in here, they're they're Feldspar you know a little smaller than my fingernail in general. But you could, in some places where there were blocks lying around that were that were decomposing, you could just reach out and grab a piece and break off a little cube of crystal. Yeah. Just just pop it right off there because the granite's falling apart. In some cases, not always. Yeah. Uh, here's a, a close oh, up a, of another join. One. Yeah. This one's going around a corner, so this is an outside corner. And you yeah. can see how it's yeah. decomposing here. Uh, I don't have fingers in here to show you the, the scale size, but these grains are, are relatively big. Yep. Uh, let's see, what else have I got here? Yeah, okay, here's one. This is a decomposing block. I actually did, this was, I think this is it. This might have been at Tannis. This looks like Tannis, know. yeah, just the background. But I, I was able to, re on this particular block, I. I reached out and grabbed a piece and just popped it off there, one of these yeah. little quartz pieces, because this you can just rub it and these pieces start falling off. So how long does that take this granite to to get to that shape? Know, to, to get to, that to this like, one condition. meter one meter of oblation every ten million years, <laughs> <What>? depending on <laughs> depending on weather patterns. That's the watcher. Weather. Thanks, watcher. Thanks, there we go. We've got a meter of so a meter per every ten million years. So that's a centimeter of ablation in what? Uh, ten thousand years is that what that is? Yeah, a hundred. What's a what's a million divided by? Oh, now we got to do watcher math. That would be hundred thousand years. Hundred thousand. Well, well, a hundred. A hundred. So, well, yeah, a hundred. Centimeter. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. So a hundred thousand years per centimeter. Yeah. So you're right. But does, no, no, it also no, no, no. <laughs> one meter. One meter per million years. Is that what he said? Ten million. Oh, ten million. Giant flood. 
Jesus. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you are talking like <laughs> but, but, 100,000 years for a centimeter. <laughs> Far yeah. out. Okay. And those figures are based on the deterioration right. of granite domes and state capitals, by the way. So now that we've, we've mm -hmm. looked at some let's, granite, we've looked at the consistency of the granite, let's go to the, um, let's wow. go to the quarry. Uh, so now, oh, the yeah. reason yeah, I picked, yeah. I picked these out because of the witness marks, the tool marks. Now you see this, it's going in this direction in some of these pits. Uh, yeah. Right, they're going around. Which I don't know. It's, I'm trying to imagine somebody digging this by hand, you know, with the diorite pounding stone like they talk about. And I feel like if that was the case, then if there were any witness marks, they should be going down the hole, not around it. I, I don't know. We have some that go down, like the ones that the test yeah. pits on the side of the obelisk. They seem to go down. Right. Um, but you're right. There's that does seem to have like a, a horizontal aspect to the scoops. You see the scoop marks yeah. everywhere here in the in the granite though. Scoop, scoop, right. scoop, scoop. So scoop, and again, this scoop. is the granite. This is the same granite we were just looking this at. All granite. It's, this yeah. is this this rose or you know pink, Aswan granite. It, yeah. It's in in Upper Egypt, which is down south. It just comes. It's you can see it sticking up out of the ground everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, out of the Nile. Um, it's there's islands of, made of it. Yeah. In the Nile River. Uh, beautiful stuff. I got some 3D scans of this stuff we can pull up, maybe. Yeah. So, so these results. are just. Oh you, yeah. Ben, yeah. We'll we'll look at some of Ben's scans. So yeah. the, again, these are these are interesting patterns, work patterns in the in the quarry. All these little squares in this sort of uh, in this set here. It's like it seems to be in this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Well, it's like, I think it's almost, they've scooped under it. There was an object that they snapped off on top. In, yeah. If you go back, there was, I think it's like, like this, this might be a line uh, here yes. in between. Like this is right here. where they re had removed something. This is, so if you imagine these walls on either side of this stuff, they had to scoop, go down. And then they got, they maybe carved underneath something that was attached to this. And then they, they snap it off. I see. Yeah, this is the snap point yep, right here. Maybe yeah. and this and this one because yeah. we, we see that process in action in the in the um, in the one that we we got right under. Like there's that piece of stone where they were carving underneath it. Yes. Yeah. And scoop, scoop, scoop. Now, <laughs> there's no one for there's no one for scale here, but some of these were pretty big, wide. I mean, like uh, you know. Yeah. So. Well, a lot uh, and a lot yeah. of them seem consistent too. There's there, there may be some yes. of different widths, but. That's one of the things I want to do with these the scans that I took, particularly around the the piece of the block. Uh, they did seem to be pretty consistent. I know from previous trips, uh, a guy scanned them and said that they were all roughly around like fifty one centimeters wide, like all the all of the scoop marks that he'd mm. seen. So, yeah, which is interesting. That's the, uh, old Egypt squat right That's there. The, this is cop in the Egypt squat. squat. Yeah, yeah, all right, <laughs> yeah. This is the, he's prepping prepping to scan. Prepping to scan. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was That's walking around with my iPad everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 scan the scan stance. Stance. <laughs> uh, stance. There's Sebastian. It's Sebastian. Yep. Yep. And A. A. Ron. Yeah, A. Ron. Yep. Okay, so I think these are. Well, I put marks. this in there because these are these are more modern. Yep. Quarry marks. They are. Right. So these would be made with 100%. iron, iron tools possibly, and then. Yep. Uh, they would jam wedges in there, wet the wood, wet the wedges, and then wait, and it would split the rock. Well, yeah, so they'd, they'd get all the pressure, and then they'd, they'd start hammering into another wedge with, yeah. with iron or another flint piece or whatever. Right. So these were it. probably breaking something off in this direction, right? Whatever mm -hmm. they took, I don't know, but that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Now you can definitely. see lines of those. Yeah, that's modern. That's more modern. Well, right. modern we say, but that's this, a technique that's more or less been in place. Like we have evidence for the dynastic Egyptians doing that shit, you know. Like that's when they were quarrying yes. the, the, the when Ramses was quarrying from the middle pyramid. That's how he was doing it using this technique. That's the funny right. thing too. It's like, you know, it's not like they were, you know, Ramses was doing the pounding stone thing to get his rock out. Like he was doing the this this wood, yeah. this wood splitting. They're doing you know? they're doing this, and I, that's what I'm saying. That's so you see these these aren't scoop marks. They no. they don't look anywhere near the same. There's no scooping. Or patterns or anything on this. If they, if this, if all of these quarry lines here were to break off this thing, Egyptian Johnson, he's like, I've been on the nubbing job. Now I'm on the scooping job. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> Egy That's great. Egyptian Johnson. The Egyptian Johns. Egypt Johns. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's and there's the unfinished obelisk. So these test pits right. here. So yeah. again, this looks like it could have been an obelisk work, right? It's, yeah. I don't know. But they snap this thing off here, and now you've got, if there was a big square of stone up here, yep. you have this first step to carving down your granite obelisk. But this unfinished obelisk, it doesn't have any of that. No. There's none of that shit at the edges here. There's just no. these scoop marks, crazy troughs. And again, this pattern is the same as what we saw yeah. over here. Yep. Okay. Now there's this crack, and this does have some. There is some quarrying they, here. They tried I'm to quarry it later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah people... I'm interested in why, if this has been laying here for a long time, why none of these quarry people ever took it. You know, because you see them quarrying granite all over the. All over Egypt. So yeah. why wasn't this ever taken? They tried. There was pieces of it. Like it, it, it's there are like little wedge. There are some holes in it. But yeah, I'm not sure why it never got taken. But there, there is evidence that they tried. Like they they started yeah. to quarry it and then they either didn't or I don't know. Yeah. But the, it's and definitely they, like a dash uh, line in it somewhere where they were going to try and quarry. Yeah, there is. Of... I'll get, yeah, I have a picture of it. We'll get to. But I I have all these pictures included just because there's just so many interesting features that you can see from all these different angles. Like, mm -hmm. what are these? We see these on the boxes in the, you know, mm -hmm. in the in the Serapium, right? I feel like these are very similar to those em scoops in the boxes. These are rougher. Em yeah, emptying out cracks and stuff so they can't yeah. keep cracking. So here's more random areas in the quarry scooping. But, okay. Just the scooping to the left of this is great. I got this whole thing scanned over here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, this... Yeah, look at this. It's like... Very interesting. It's like some... Yeah. Un this is a great shot. This... this it's like a uniform. You can just see how like, yeah. something's it's been the same digging tool. it. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's not a. It's not a random. A bunch of Johnsons with diorite pounding stones. This is the, the same, same tool. tool edge. Yeah, you know, and it's it's square. Like why? If you're if you're just using a pounding stone, why are you making squares? Square, all over right. The place? Yeah, like that's a right. lot of work. You'd be right. It'd why be are you making round. all these squares? Look, and look. you can actually see them if you if you look carefully. You see that this, even though it's much smoother, these squares are all over the top of this thing. Yeah. See this yeah. this area of the of the unfinished obelisk was done by a non Johnson. <laughs> That's but right. The guy that was, you know, was like they they get a new Johnson on the job and they're like, okay, just start doing what I'm doing here. And then he's like, rah, rah, rah. and they're like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Dang it, Jats. And then they get the the guy does the rest of this, and then finally, you know, they non Johnson know, comes in sick. and then. He yeah. was sick that day, and Non Johns finishes this. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is obviously there's no need to be careful here, right? That's clear. Yeah. But obviously, they were trying to be very careful with the tool here, and right. in some cases, you know, they weren't as careful, or maybe they had to get rid of some uh, it, bad materials it, here. It, yeah, it might have been like emptying cracks. Like that's that's the same process that happened with the you know the Serapium boxes. Like they had to. It seemed important that these things were solid, so they would empty out the cracks, and that's why you end up with those with the scoop marks on those boxes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, I'll point out, these are what yep, mod, yep. quarry marks look like of people quarrying with the traditional with the wood traditional method. chisel, and then wooden wedges and water and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you don't see any of these patterns here. Here's another line of them. Yeah. Right. So somebody decided they wanted to take this piece, whatever was next to the to this line here. But this this is totally different. Yeah, there's and something goes, else going on. Yeah, and it goes these lines, in some cases you can see like there'll be a scoop here, <laughs> and then the line follows and it's the same width and it goes all the way down the trough. And in some cases you can see it go around the bottom and then up the side of the obelisk. Yeah, like you can see, yeah, yeah, and it it actually progressed down into these these holes on the side. I actually have scans of like the side of this and the hole that goes right down next to it, the yeah, test pit. A, it yeah, there's thing. another test pit there. Yeah, that goes down quite a ways. That goes down like, yeah, it like does. twenty feet or something. But there's <laughs> let's see some of those scans. Okay. Yeah, I'll pull, yeah. We'll pull them up. I, 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 I get um, yeah, get you're, the, you're right. And I was just going to say that the thing that cracks me up about this too is is the the indoctrination that you're forced to endure when you go to the quarry because it's, yeah, it's a have, fascinating place to watch, to, watch to sit down and watch to, to to visit but everyone that goes in there is forced to sit it's the only place they seem to do this they sit you down in like a hot room and they got one little tv that works and they put it on as like a 10 minute video of like yeah. zahi and and crew explaining how it was oh, all, it was all done with pounding stones like they're literally like oh it was just it was pounding stones and time and effort and they really <laughs> wanted to do it like everyone got their everyone was behind the project and 
Yeah. And then they just, and you know. And they work for beer, right? Be, beer, beer and blankets. Beer. Yeah, beer and blankets. Beer and blankets is what we learned. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Like and they, that was a great that was a great group because Zahi yeah. comes on like, the TV and everybody's like, <laughs> and so the mind is like, what they really they really like Zahi? Yeah, the channel, they have no idea. Here. This might be loud. Yeah. Yeah. Being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I think Kyle has the best. I'm I'm finishing up here on what I was getting at with all these scoops. Like, mm-hmm. This starts with the Minkare pyramid and those facing blocks and the patterns on those and it goes all it goes yep. to here we're looking the at these scoop marks yeah we, <laughs> we're looking mm-hmm. at these scoop scoop marks these are alongside the other work thing that we were actually looking like, get right in down here and go under yeah. i think that's been, me there actually yeah this is this has been scanning in the down in the, the hole scanning squat yeah right yeah. he's in the egypt egyptian scanning squat um yeah there we are crawling through it and we made some observations about these patterns yeah. that I think Kyle has the best photo of that um, that we'll get to in a minute here. This is underneath. I crawled down in there and took some pictures, tried to pick, take pictures of what it looks like underneath this big block of stone. And this is my favorite part because, yeah, this is underneath. And now bear in mind, with the pounding stone idea, like a lot of it, like they'll show you, oh, it's all this vertical pounding. This is yeah. this sort of pounding and this sort of pounding. Right. You've got a yeah. horizontal or <laughs> throwing the damn ball up in the air. like you Right, know, yeah, what, exactly. <laughs> Good luck. Exactly. Do it for I don't know an hour. So, Get back to me. Tell me how you feel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And 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 the point about that is that it takes so much time to to move away a little bit of stone that this this work here to if if this is the lowest point that you need yeah. this little ridge line this dip superfluous just this one dip is going to take so much time yeah. yeah. And then That's to do another point. one As here, see it's here, going to take so much time. We achieved this in just a few days. Reason to do that. So it, it, that's, yeah. that's obviously not the tool that was being used. Yeah, that's yeah. a great point. That there, there's all this extra work. Well, if, this yeah. is, if this is the low, lowest you need to get, then why did you dig all, all the way down to this? Right. Yeah. This, it, it seems like it was, it was okay. easy for them. And then, right. And you have the other evidence of that in, in things like overcuts on statues and stuff like that. Cause it's, it's, I just dropped the clip in for chat. Like the, the, as you can see here, we achieved this in only a few days. Like it's the one time they tried to, they tried to cut granite with the, like a saw and, and they did the experiment, like a grinding saw where they're putting sand into it. And there's a, there's a moment where the guy goes, as you can see here, we achieved this over just a few days. And it's like, it's a cut this deep. Like they've been sawing in this cut <laughs> for days. And they made about two <laughs> inches of progress through granite, like just pouring sand with this big, thick copper bar, and these these, oh, yeah. these poor two Egyptian punters, like, ah, oh, Jesus, why are we? It's not getting paid enough. Yeah, to do this. so they <laughs> yeah. they made five inch overcuts in basalt doing that, right? Right. Well, it only takes oh, oh a yeah, or just like, yeah, yeah, little overcuts. You see them in the obelisks at Karnak. We saw them on statues. Yeah. You see them in the armpits of statues. You don't make overcuts in this material if you're doing things by hand, because right. it would take you hours and hours if not days to make them like oh shit like that's a long oh shit you know like yeah. <laughs> as, as, as opposed to just like you know touching it up with some tool that's able to remove the stone in some simple fashion which is what we're seeing here did you want to yeah. talk about these the angle on these lines yeah this is the last last bit i was going to get to is is this this is it this is really cool so yeah. this the the point is in this photo you can see that these right here are at this angle they're not going straight down so right. um, that is slightly out of the camera view here. These are the ones that we're, we were just looking at that are actually going down at this angle, and they start to straighten mm. as you get here, and then they're going straight down, and then once again, over here, they're tilted. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what it looks like, <laughs> and it's, it's difficult to show this, but what it looks like is that you had some kind of tool that was on an articulated arm that could, you know, could move like think of a backhoe but it could also do this you know turn mm-hmm. i'm sorry turn this way yeah right? it can scoop out but it can also turn its bucket this way yeah it's as if as if the tool was like planted here or you had like the, it wasn't moved so you were you're scooping straight down here and then as you extend out the angle's right. shifting so, yeah that like right in front of you like you're doing it like this right. and then as you get out farther you're trying you're to make a flat like wall so you're doing this yes yeah. exactly yeah. and then yeah. you would move the tool move whatever it was yep. and then start flat again beep 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 you know? all right now we'll dig from here all right yeah yeah that's and i love i love right? like, thinking about that yeah. with what the chris dunn's depiction of what he thinks that tool might look like which was <laughs> yes. some tool on basically on an articulated arm 
that right. was able to sort of scoop that granite out somehow. And this yeah. almost this this to me looks. It's I don't know know how else to explain it. It's like Johnson, you need to pound on an angle. Like you wouldn't, yeah, you know, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. this doesn't make sense. But it does make sense if you consider that the the whatever was digging this was parked here on an articulated arm, and as it it just reaching out here, eventually, you know, the, the angle changes. It's exactly what it, I have a back out here. It's, same, it's, same, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in yeah, in my right here, like straight, then it angles. The out. way I view it is it. I, I don't care that the arm articulates and goes under the boulder that Russ is standing on in this photo. Right. The point is, is that, like, to me, I would imagine the machine positioned over here, reaching out this way. Oh, okay. And yeah. when it's reaching out to the right, That's also it's, it, yeah. when, it's, when it's way out there, like this, it's going straight. And as this thing starts to bend, then the angle changes. Then the angle changes. When you get closer, closer to yourself. So yeah. then you have to back oh, up. Get, yeah, yeah. Uh, and All right, yeah. You, okay, is turning. That's the that, way I that see it. That makes plenty of sense too. Yeah, either way. I, As you yeah, can see here, right. we achieved this sense. in just yeah, a few days. Yeah, obviously this tool was able to go down, and then go, go under, under the rock. Under the rock. Yeah, that's so. why I was thinking it was digging from this way because that it was, could be. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. I don't know. This, it just obviously looks like there are two different positions here because you see the same pattern on this side as you see it over over here that extends down past where you can't see but yeah yeah i thought that was a good observation all right so final bit here on this scooping stuff yeah one more one more section this is the, we'll go to the assyrian um yeah, yeah, yeah got plenty of great photos of the assyrian but there's one section that was really interesting to me uh well to all of us let me and pull up some scans here. just to get it ready now there it is okay so in the assyrian and again i'll start here because um this is quarrying modern modern quarrying techniques somebody was more modern more modern somebody and they did it to a bunch of these blocks so you can see that they put yeah. holes in here and they were trying to break this off and this didn't break right it, it you know they got this piece up here but right. they wanted right. more of it so um you can see these some of these have patterns it's difficult to to be sure but you can kind of see some patterns it's hard to tell if it's from erosion or not um uh, but here we go. One of the walls of the Assyrian interior, it's got this pillowy, and you can see all these rough scoops all over it. The sun was really in a good position to show this. All these lines going up and down on these stones. Up and down. And I'm not talking about the this, uh, this patina or this mold or growth or whatever. You can see actual in the stone itself, there are these lines that go up and down. Like somebody was scooping at it with some kind of tool from... An articulated machine. Here's some. Yeah. They had nubs. nubs. There's nubs. two right. nubs here that have been, that cut, have been off. cut off. Right. Here's one that's inset. Uh, so yeah, you can see nubs. Some of these have. I don't know. There's lots of interesting patterns. But this wall, going in this direction. Here's a big scoop. Right, going yep. down. Yeah. Oh. Right. Going in this direction. Now here we have the same effect we saw in the on the Menkara pyramid where they were planing this wall off flat. They were taking this previously pillowy shape, which Kyle talked about right. on one of the audio shows we did, that you do this because you're protecting the what you want the final face of this block to be is hidden under several inches of hard, hard stone, stone here. Because you're transporting it, maybe gets because, damaged, whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. What you want is this face. And you want your lifting nubs. And you need your nubs, <laughs> yeah. So once you've got them in place, you cut, you cut off nubs and some of the pillowing to get them kind of so that they're not so much in the way because if you got you know if you got a nub here that's sticking out 12 inches or whatever it's going to be in the way of you doing work so you get rid of that stuff yep but you don't face it yet but then they started, started facing, facing it and they're doing it from the top down which is another thing i saw like as a when you go paint a house you start at the top of the wall and work your way down right you know you when you're doing finishing work you start, you start at the top, top and, and work down and yeah. work down because stuff's going to be falling and if you've finished these off bits of rock falling down here are going to damage your face on this block down here. So you do it up here, and it looks, you know, again, the painting painting uh, imagery is apt because it looks like they were using, like, a roller. You can see the... Yeah, they're like... <laughs> right, it's, it's, it's scooped down somehow. Yeah. yeah, and they did the ceiling first. The ceil Well, the ceiling is very flat. I think, I think those look were at flattened that. before they were... Yeah, they were probably were. But look at this. Look at this line. This is a great picture. Mind you, you also the, the the blocks above here are gigantic too. Like the, oh yeah, the roof he's, blocks he's in the going, uh, Assyrian he's, are monstrous. He's going across the top here are mind-bogglingly enormous. It's hard to, to to capture that in photographs, 
But again, I was just really fascinated with this process that, again, looks unfinished to me. Like, it looks like they intended to do it to the entire thing and never Got finished it. it. Yeah. 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 Because it's, they're... I, I'm yeah. under... I can't, I be, I can't go back and forth, too. I can't... It does seem like there's plenty of evidence that there was a, an event or something happened that caused down tools, you know? Uh, yeah. We see it in the Serapium. We see it in places like this. We see it on the wall of the, the third pyramid. You've got the box in the hallway at the Serapium, that sort of stuff. It seems, right. yeah, mate. It does seem like at some point something interrupted this because you're right. This this doesn't. This looks like they're intending to do it everywhere, and they just yeah they and stopped. So I want to show this because Kyle has talked about this quite a few Around times. Now you can imagine this this block before they faced it was a pillow. It stuck out here, right? And when they faced it off, now it makes this corner go around the corner. Yep, yep. That's right? how they it's do it. Really, it's yeah. just really cool how you end up with the, the multiple effects that we see, you know. And then there's things like this. I've got some better pictures, but stuff like this, these little insets. Oh yeah. Now we have some good pictures of this. Um, let's see. If, yeah, here's one. They don't go all the way through the wall. They're just because the builders intended when they faced this off, which they never did here, I don't think, no. that this would be square, that there wouldn't be a hole here. Like this block down here clearly had a problem right at this corner. Mm -hmm. So you make this little inset so that when your facing machine comes along and planes the whole thing off, it's got a corner there and not a hole, not a, a, a gap, right? Yep. Here's some more. You can see the patterns. Those are patterns. like Cory patterns yeah. right there. Yep. Yep. Here's an, a Another beautiful inset. inset. Yeah. <clears throat> there was some, it, it uh, implies to me that there was just some error here with this edge of the block. So they scooped it out and stuck this in there. And then when it was, <laughs> when it would have been planed off, it would have been perfect, right? Yeah. I don't know. Again, here's nubs. Yeah. All right. I'm done. No, no, I like that. Look, yeah. let's, let's look at some scans. All right, I've got people asking for Tannis. We will probably get to Tannis. I don't know if we'll get to Tannis today, but we will definitely get around to them. One of the things I want to talk about was the, I don't know if we have time for the topic, but the giant statues and the reuse of them because we had a couple of examples of giant feet and giant hands that yes. uh, is, is a fun thing to kind of uh, consider. Let me So let me find a Blender. Where are you, Blender? Show all windows. A Blender. Yeah, we'll get some Blender going. Um, <laughs> if I can... If I can find it. Where am I seeing? Blender. Here we go. All right. Let me move it over here. You guys can see that. I take it. Uh, let's see. Kyle's working on audio. Yep. Yes. Yep. We see. Yep. It. So this is. Uh, it says I don't know how well the motion's going to apply for you guys. Um, but so this is some of the scoop marks. We've got the back of um, Catcher here as well. But it it it's it. One of the things I'm able to do with this is to do some basic measurements of these scoop marks because I got right down beneath mm -hmm. the uh, beneath this 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 rock, um, yeah. I and I still need to learn how to drive Blender a little bit better. Um, um, but yeah, it's it's I got some. Are some, you, I'm moving are you it. moving it? Because I haven't seen it move yet. Okay, well I I am moving it here on the oh, okay. on the stream. You guys, uh, you are screen. Yeah, sharing. maybe we'll. Is it we'll caught up yet at all? It hasn't moved okay. as far as I know. All right. Uh, it is moving yeah, to the stream, so. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. I'll open the stream. Well, yeah, just keep going. Yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, Sorry. Right. yeah, no, I'm just, I, I'm, I don't know. I got to, like, let me grab another one here. Um, file import wavefront. I do make these available for patrons and stuff. Did it make well. a new window when you started moving it? Uh, maybe did. Let me let me try stopping sharing yeah. and share it again. Uh, Blender. There we go. Now we can see what's going okay. on. Okay, uh, quarry two. Let's try this. Let's see what this is. Yep. Okay. So this is. Oh yeah. So this is this is the one I was looking for actually. So this is like you can, this is the inside of um of the uh of of underneath this this rock here like this is you can actually get right in and get right down oh yeah in between the the pieces itself like get to get get a good look at like you say we we sort of saw it on the pictures but just these uniform scoop marks maybe we get the wall here as well we kind of do a little bit of it um oh yeah yeah and then uh, over here too like. Right down, 
in amongst the <laughs> the polygons. But yeah, you can get down and there it is. Yeah, see like. Yeah. The scoop marks underneath. I need there, to. I need yeah. to get to working on, on on Blender, but this you really get some remarkable results here. And I think what we'll find, and and what I'm going to be looking to do is to do a lot of measurements of these different um, these different um, uh, scoop marks Gouges. to see if there's any unif yeah. uniformity to them. Um, and yeah, you get these huge lines of the same things. So let me uh, let me pull up another one here. File open or oh, import. Front. And I, I, I definitely need to work on my, uh, my Blender skills. <laughs> oh, yeah, Let's no problem. See. What app are you using, by the way? This Blender. To do the scanning. Uh, yes. uh, on the, yeah. well, I use the iPad, uh, the iPad um, uh, Pro, and it's, I think it's, there's a couple. There's one called, um, oh, it's like 3D Scanner, and then there's another one that's uh, Poly, Polycam, I think, is the one that I like. You got to pay to export with Polycam. You got to like do the premium model mm. which is fine though it seems that you seems to get better results so this is exactly what i was talking about with the scoop mark. so remember we talked about quarrying with um with the the standard sort of dashed line that you get so this this is what i think yeah. we're looking at here is the result of the scooping underneath underneath yep. something yes. so you see that ridge that's here so i, th mm -hmm. I think these, that used the, to be a giant boulder up there i think yeah. so and i think i think this also on the left and on the far sides of these scoop marks was probably a wall as well so they dug down probably dug a pit yeah. down and then scooped underneath something, and then they. This Brilliant. is the the ridge that they likely snapped this entire uh, granite piece oh, off. Is, yeah, that is a great observation right yeah. there. I love that. Yes. And I think that's what's left. And then this may have been a wall, and then this may have been removed and, and cut down as well. So this yeah. this may have originally been a trench on both sides of an object, or even wider. And then they've come in underneath it, and then snapped this off and removed it, whatever it was. <laughs> that's um, awesome, dude. Yeah, wow. and you can. The nice thing about this is you get that aerial view. You can kind of um, look at it from above, you know. And you can measure it too. Like me the, yeah, exactly. So you, I, I don't wow. know if I can do it here. The measurement. Oh, so you can do like awesome. there to. Yeah, so that's like point five four, you know, point five nine, point five seven. So yeah, you can get right down and start measuring stuff. Um, yeah, so these all seem pretty similar. But that was another point we, we were talking about. It's like, if you know, I keep thinking of sonic drilling, you know, that, that the sonic resonance um, being able to utilize, say, a slurry of some aggregate material that's very hard along with, you know, your tool that could be copper, it could be iron, whatever, your, the tool head that's, that's being resonated. Right. To get the slurry to do the cutting action. I keep thinking of this, you know, that process. And, and of course, the metal tool is going to wear away. So if you have sharp corners, so if you have a big flat chisel and you're using that to cut these scoop marks, it's going to round off over time, right? Right. Now, when you're in the quarry, you don't care if you have a big rounded, you know, blunt-ended tool that you're coring with because you're just moving masses of material so your tool gets sort of rounded. You end up with these sort of scoopy-looking marks. Whereas when you're flattening a wall in the temple, that's you're doing the finish work, you're using your sharpest brand-new tool to do that wall. And when you look at those pictures in the Osirian, you see that. Yeah. When that tool is going down, I mean, it's flat. There's no scoopy-looking roundness to it. And at the edge where they stopped, it just sort of you see like the beveled edge where it pulls away from the wall and that's it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So it seems like the same process to me, the flattening and this scooping is just the difference between the tool tips, the tool tip being and blunt the, yeah. and rounded or nice and machined edge flat. Yeah. Tool. Yeah. Right. I get it. It's, it's, yeah, this would be interesting. I'm, I'll, I'll make an effort to, it's probably not worth doing something on stream, but I definitely want to get in and, and try and do some more precise sort of measurement of a lot of this stuff. Um, but yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's fun watching yeah, you drag yeah. it around and put and lines on it, it and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> play with it. Yeah, yeah well, this, this, the scans are great. And uh, yeah, we definitely need to do that ourselves next time too. And, you know, uh, more people doing it, the better. I, I'm definitely. worried definitely. that, I'm worried that the, 
that they're going to catch on and then they're going to start banning Maybe. somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just taking a video, so bro. We, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, so right. Like yeah. So they're going to, they're, because the, because these new devices are going to have LIDAR involved in all of them, that they're just going to ban all cell phones again. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I know. don't know. Yeah. yeah they see cell phones are the exception now when you go to Egypt, right? They tend to, right. They let, let you run just, around with a cell phone. So. Yeah. And actually, Let's I think keep it on the download, dude. Keep it on the download. Shh, don't tell anyone. Don't chat. tell anybody. Don't, don't, don't tell anybody. Scanning <laughs> stuff. Yeah, don't tell them we're scanning High stuff. High quality lidar scans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, cool. Um, diorite ball simulator. What? It's a diorite ball simulator. Yeah, <laughs> diorite ball simulator. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's a diorite ball simulator. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, it was good. all right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything else you want to cover? We've that's it's two hours. Yeah, yeah. Let's, that's that's probably a good place to uh, to wrap it up for now. I think. Um, yep. Yeah, good chat. Like it's we didn't we just jumped straight into it too. We didn't talk much about the trip or the people or anything else or the fun stuff that happened. But um, right. I, I do have to. Yeah. I do want to say with you guys, like it was a real pleasure, like spending the time with you guys in Egypt. Like I, I loved it. That getting getting having you guys come there and I really get a kick out of seeing people, particularly people that are really interested and invested uh in yeah. things like egypt see that stuff for the first time and just the you know the mind getting yeah, blown yeah. repeatedly kind of mind thing explosions all two weeks that's right yeah. two every weeks. freaking day <laughs> that's yeah. right so well thanks fun. matt it was it was likewise it was a pleasure uh and uh, you know like you said we didn't mention much of the group but everyone there was amazing if they any were. of you are watching yeah. we miss you guys yeah, yeah. it was so Absolutely. awesome you made you guys i mean egypt is really cool but you guys also made the the experience just oh. so much more amazing yeah yeah i i heard you guys talk about it on your stream as well but i just i love the group like the the guy that yeah. that photo of the paparazzi line of of when we the widescreen looking at you know there's all these devices and cameras and things like aimed up because we step back we say step back we'll take a picture you know well we're not all up yeah. on this thing it's not a person or it's not artwork it's not anything it's a granite box and it's like the whole right. the whole <laughs> crowd's right. like aiming oh look at this granite box and yeah it's just like this is the right crowd it was um yeah it was cool that's right yeah in a temple surrounded with all this artwork and we're looking at a chunk of granite in the corner yeah. that no one pays attention yeah, to. Yeah, all the other tourists are <laughs> ooing and ahhing at the artwork and like, look at the beautiful paint. We're like, look at the granite. And like, this is this <laughs> broken chunk of granite in a dark corner. We're all like, ah, oh, look at this. And That's people right. People are like measuring are. it and shit. It's, 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 <laughs> Granidiots. Uh, Granidiots. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Granidiots. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And Yusuf, you know, he's he's a uh, epic teacher for this stuff. I love spending time oh, with him. Man, yeah. I know everyone yeah. always gets a lot out of him. So, um, yeah, it was cool. Yep. Well, we can do more of this. I have I think so. plenty more questions, and oh, I've got dude. a whole bunch more photos we could go through. All of us do. Yeah, same here. This was yeah. a lot of fun. We'll we'll get our streaming game up to par before hey, we hey. try it again. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, folks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, well, 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 maybe we'll try it again later tonight, right? I think uh, Cosmographia yeah, is I know. supposed we're gonna to be live. Fix, we're going to have to fix our problems before later tonight, which is why we got to get off the show now, because we need time <laughs> yeah. to fix our problems before we start that. Yeah, so everyone... Yeah, so thanks, yeah. Yeah, thanks to everybody. And uh, UnchartedX.com, Brothers of the Serpent.com. Indeed. And you, Brent, you're going to have to send us the video, because we don't have... I will. We actually... Yeah, we'll definitely do <laughs> or that. I could yes. just tell her. I could just tell everybody you want a podcast this week. Go to Ben's channel. It's no, 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 no. We'll, I'll get to. We'll get to the video and everything. And and uh, just to let everyone know that uh, we will be back uh, with Randall. I think it's going to be live stream tonight. That's the intent anyway. So I think seven thirty Pacific, so nine thirty Central uh, yeah. on the Cosmography Randall Carlson channel. We're going to join uh, those guys for a chat. Probably a bit more about Egypt, a bit more about the Scablands trips and. Uh, see wherever yeah. the conversation goes should be fun so maybe you have to stream it instead of us if we can't get it <laughs> we'll see yeah, yeah yeah we'll see what happens all right okay <laughs> thanks everybody thanks everybody, yeah, thanks, everybody. Yeah. we'll Night. see you in the next one